Hey, hey, I've got Sam hey. loud and clear now. Hey, loud and clear, one, yeah. two. Well, guys, uh, welcome back to the second second one of these that we're doing. These are stacking up. People seem to enjoy <laughs> these shenanigans that went down uh, at Sydney. So we're back. We've flown across the pond. Once again, brought to you by the legends at Nobby. As you can see, we're all wearing the hats. Me and Jats decided, you know what, we flew here together, we're just going to dress the same the whole mm-hmm. weekend. Yeah. That's pretty weird. It's weird, but you That's know That's very what? Tasmanian of you. It is. Yeah. It, it's oh, weird. very Cairns, very far <laughs> north Queensland. Very Cairns-like, <laughs> yes. So, just be- well, before we get into uh, what's, what, what's really going down here, we <laughs> have to talk about uh, the lovely guys at Nobby that made this whole thing possible. Uh, once again, this was their idea at Sydney. They kind of said to us, oi, this is something we should do. Um, so here we are. Uh, you can join the Nobby Nation by going to nobbyunderwear.com.au. Uh, 20 bucks a month. And then if you peek over Sam's left shoulder, Sam, do you want to do like your best little like late night TV infomercial for me? Well, yeah, there we go. There we go. Uh, so that's December. They don't normally leak these things. I was going to uh, pick that up, but I couldn't. No, nah, it's fine. Just do, you just do like a like a like one of those, it's a new car. One it's of those a new things. car. I'm just trying um, to tighten up my uh, mic stand here. It's a bit... A bit loose. <laughs> loose. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, the boys, they don't normally do the, um, they don't normally do, like, the preview. Normally every month. Yeah, there you go. Sam's got that sorted. Uh, every month it's a surprise, but not for December. We're leaking, <laughs> we're leaking some stuff early. This is exclusive here. Um, but, yeah, so 20 bucks a month. Uh, you get a new pair every month, and it's literally that easy. Um, as you can see, we're a well-endowed model here. Uh, that's December and I'm going to get like five or six pairs of them because I actually really like it. I'm actually going to get six or nine pairs no, of them. No, you're not. Rob yeah. told me you're not even getting one. No, I'm getting... Well, I'm on the list, bro. <laughs> oh, shit. Rob doesn't even... Rob, no. <laughs> Rob doesn't even have a say in it, mate. I'm subscribed. Um, so, yeah, that one is out the way. Uh, secondly, we're going to give a shout out to our boys at Rival Inc. Jats, have you got a story about Rival Inc? Are you running some Rival this weekend? Oh, mate, we have got the full Rival numbers on for this weekend. One off only for this round, so stoked to have the boys involved. Yeah, and they, they bu- dope. They busted it out quick too. The boys, they uh, we called them up. We said we needed them, and uh, that was it. Yeah, and I heard you came out of retirement and, and uh, installed them. I did yeah. actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I kicked it old school, and uh, look. There's less in a, in a very intimate setting that was your hotel room. Oh, yeah. mate. Hotel yeah. room slash workshop for we're this gonna, week. We're going to post a video. We uh, yeah. we had Papa Pete. He's in the background there. Yeah. He, uh, he made it happen for us. Um, yeah, Pete. Got it, got it done. So. MVP. We're, we're running. Jats is here running the MVP. full <laughs> MVP. Running the full privateer spec this weekend. Uh, old Richo is Blue Wing Hondas hooked it up. But anyway, rival link. Back to the boys. Uh, we've gone on a tangent already. I love yeah. it. Um, but yeah, so you can hit up those guys. Rivallinkdesigncode.com. Uh, you can actually put in a code Gypsy Tales and you're going to get fifteen percent off. Uh, it is new bike season. So it is that can come in Christmas handy. Christmas time, what a great Christmas present! Yeah, Christmas present, time. Yeah. So, Sam, is there any Gypsy Tales codes for Fist? Is there still one? Yeah, Black Friday fifteen. <laughs> no. <laughs> is there a Gypsy? No, no, no. I thought Actually, there was a no, Gypsy no, Tales no, there code. Is. No, there is. I forget what it is. I think it's probably just Gypsy Tales. You could use Black Friday. <laughs> I can't. I can't remember, but I'm sure that's what it is. I'm Try not very it. Anyway. Try it. Let, let us know. It. Yeah, let us know. I wouldn't have deleted it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, boys. So we're at Auckland, and it is a tad wet. Do you think? Yes or no that Ben Townley planned this rain? I'd say no because he's not he's just doing just doing a little race, I think. So I don't even think he wants to do the little race hard out. <laughs> <laughs> I think he wants a mutter even for like the little stuff. Well Chris Camilleri tells me this morning, he said I, I came just to do best whip, but if it keeps raining I'm definitely racing, which is the complete polar opposite of what anyone's ever mm. said before. Is there a shark alarm going on? Uh, I think they're just testing out the intro music. Sounds like or it. Yeah. Is this is this for you? Jats is going to come out. Whoop whoop! It's the sound of the police. <laughs> yeah. Simon Mack has just walked in. He's local. He should know. What is that alarm? Fire! Fire! fire. fire. Mm. Good work. Good Listen, time. honestly, I don't think there's any fire going on. <laughs> I reckon if there is a fire, it's going to be put out in uh, 3.7 seconds. The only yeah. fire that's happening is in this tent. I know. <laughs> the only f- we're actually we're actually sitting on straight fire right now, me and Sam. And then oh, Jats, like I'm pretty sure a lady died of emphysema while sitting on that couch. I believe so too. I found a couple of blood stains on here. There's definitely been a homicide in this seat. Definitely. A hundred percent. So 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 while we got Jats, actually, should we just talk about Super X first? Sure. 
The yeah. su- no, not Super X. Oz X Open Sydney. Yeah. yeah. That was a sick event. So Jet- good. Rad. Always amazing. Always now, a good time. Jats, how was your weekend? Oh, Shit. mine? Yeah. Not bad. Really? <laughs> not a bad weekend. Yeah. No, how did you go? Sick. Man, it was sick. We got two, um, like we did the triple crown thing, got two race wins, just missed out on the overall by a point. But Ooh. I mean, hey, you know what? I was pumped with it. Put on a good show for the fans, snapped the neck off over the finish. So, so yeah, you know what? I was pretty stoked with it. You created a moment that will live forever. Oh, definitely. And really, that's what it's all about. You know what? We didn't get the race win, but... Uh, no, you we got had two good, race wins. Oh, you just didn't get the overall. Oh, yeah. yeah, we, yeah but in saying it, we you created a moment that lived forever. Oh, absolutely. We were actually trying to find it last night and couldn't find it anywhere. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Show someone. Uh, uh, are, we, they, are those audio so, levels all good? So if, anyone's, uh, yeah. if anyone's got that on film, can they please send yeah. it to us? Yeah, yes, we definitely. Need it. So, I'll have to get it off Bailey. Yeah. Have to ask him for the footage. Yeah. 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 He'll hook it up. For he's sure. he's yeah. good like that old Adam. Yeah. Um so yeah, then uh the four fifty class was pretty epic. Uh we saw some good racing between El Hombre, Dean Wilson, uh the boy oh Oh wow, that's loud. Ooh. Yeah, we're, we're getting excited already. I'm yeah. starting to feel it. I'm getting um, charged up. So yeah, welcome to the world's loudest podcast. Yeah. And it's the most background noise ever. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so the boys, El Hombre, Dino battled it out. We had uh, old uh, Chad was in there. Yeah, Reed and got in the mix a bit. Yep, yep, yeah. yep. All the boys, all the boys are up there and provided some pretty epic racing. Uh, and then we move on to Auckland. The boy, like, we, we must, we have to say, when we got here yesterday... This place looked a million dollars. Like we had yeah. the how good's the weather yeah. been? The last two days I've been oh. here and it's been oh, so nice. So good. And then today, uh-oh. it's Freaking such a shame, man. A like damper. they did honestly <laughs> such run perfect. Yeah, yeah. They did Moist. such an amazing job yeah. uh, up until it started raining at ten o'clock last night. Um, so yeah, obviously a massive uh, a massive downer with the rain, but. The crew's working hard. They've kind of recovered the track up a little bit, um, but yeah, look, Jats could be uh, Jats could be taking another two moto wins tonight in the mud here. If uh, look, it does rain in North Queensland, and there's it no ta- there's rain. no Tassie riders here because it rains yeah, more in Tassie. That's, that's true. Yeah, I should race. You should race. One hundred percent. I get think Sammy right. needs to come back out of retirement for this one. Nah. He's got a good chance. Listen, Supercross is never my strong point. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I um I'm looking forward to it. It's actually it's going to be interesting to see how it all goes down tonight because it, I mean it's definitely wet. We can't really we can't really yeah. dance around that one, can we? No, nah, nah, it's going to be not. wet. It's going to be a mutter. If it is, all right, not if it is. It's obviously going to be a mutter. Who are we picking in the uh, in the 450 class? If not yourself, mm. who is who are you going to favour in the in the wet? Do you think? I mean, it's hard to go. Definitely like. If we go back to Jim Boomba last year, where Jay Wilson Ooh, absolutely killed yeah. it. Oh, yeah. Well, Jay's going to be a dark horse in the field. Yeah. He's a dark horse for sure. And, like, I definitely, I mean... Not I even hit, a dark horse. I mean, because I did take the covers off before when the rain started coming down. And I thought this was a bit of a tactic. He's told the boys take the cover off because he's a mud god. Yeah, he is so, a mud god. I mean, god. it could be a bit of strategy getting played Or here. maybe a local New Zealander. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Coops might come out of the woodwork. Yeah, Coops is like, mate. actually, I'm racing now. Yeah. <laughs> he's like... Like, you know what, boys? I'm oh, shit, just seen the forecast, boys. <laughs> I'm on the way, eh? I'm in, I'm in. I will not race unless it is pissing down rain. Well, Brad Brad Groombridge is, is racing. He's, he's going to be good in the mud. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. So it's going to be interesting. Have you ever hit one of these uh, these steel ramp deals in the uh, in the wet? Uh, no, I have not, Jason. I have not, <laughs> <laughs> I have no, not I have hit not. one of these metal ramps in the pissing rain. Because apparently <laughs> if you... Uh, if you ask Tucker Higashino and yeah. Cam Sinclair and Robbie Adelberg, they've basically already gone to the pub. Yeah. <laughs> yes. They're done. I do not blame them at all. So, yeah, yeah we, we might be on Struggle Street with the, even the finish line uh, yeah. jump here tonight. Listen, I don't think there'll be a whole heap of double backies going on today. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, no. Definitely won't be any stunts going down during tonight's program. Oh, uh, apart from when you cross the finish line. Yes. <laughs> yeah, definitely. The only stunt that's going to be getting pulled off is a neck snapper over the finish. Yeah, that you're rolling. <laughs> yeah, that we're rolling. How yes. do you how do you time a neck snapper when you roll the jump? Is Man. it just kind of like apex, like right at the yeah, top? Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. At right at the top. Yeah, definitely. So, Jats, how did yeah. this whole uh, program come about for you to be over here? 
Uh, well, you know, I just got in uh, contact with the um, people at uh, Blue Wing with uh, Damien and Lance and the guys there and uh, yeah, they were yeah, they had a bike sitting there and yeah, they were like, yes we got one here for you, so yeah, you can take it and do what you want with it for the weekend so yeah, big shout out to those guys for hooking it up and then, you know, everyone else involved with getting me over here Pete for uh, putting in the late hours on the bike, getting it ready to go, so uh, nah feeling good for it, I'm keen to get out there whether it's raining and it's a mud fest or not i'm pumped to be here it's gonna be sick yeah i feel like when you when it is like this and you know it's gonna rain like what else can you do but just send it oh you just gotta embrace it just get out there and let it rip it's all you can oh, do well everyone's gotta ride the same track right exactly so, yeah 100 yeah. percent. like it sucks but like whatever yeah oh yeah I'm, I'm, I'm still looking forward to it obviously we're gonna be dry i don't have to be out in the mud once we pack down this uh over exuberant uh, podcast setup. Uh, I'm just going to be hitting the tins and uh, maybe watching with Sam. Maybe uh, carrying on over the old uh, Instagram. Jace J- is going to have maybe two, two to three two drinks. Two to three two, tins, two, two and then we'll have to put him to bed. Yeah, and then he's done. I said uh, I woke up this morning with a headache, man, and I had like three drinks last night <laughs> over the space of five hours. Hey, eh? you're an animal. I know. I'm a full ball. Easily insane. written off. This is, sorry to the people at home, that we've just got no control over the absolute chaos. This, I feel like we're podcasting in a war zone right now. <laughs> I'm cool with it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, it's, you know what? I love it. You just got to embrace it. I love being surrounded by chaos. Can we, um, can, can anyone shed light on the situation of Dean Wilson running a red plate? Yeah, no, no, because yeah. he's the leader of the Oceana Championship. No, yeah. isn't Ando? No, because he's not. No, here. Ando's but not. But he's here. still the leader, right? Oh, here we go. Oh, this is a was real Jason. Oh, yeah, this is he, a real Jace McAvoy yeah, thing. Was he too late on getting his noms in for it? Is maybe that he didn't why, enter. Yeah, maybe he didn't enter in the. I full feel like series. he should still be running the red plate. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I like that Dean's got it. I think. Just yeah, saying. That, just saying. You know what? Hey. It's been a minute since Dino's run the red plate, so. <laughs> Dude, you know it's what? been since. Uh, Minio's 98. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's bullshit. He yeah. uh, he actually, I'm pretty sure he had the red plate when uh, when Eli Tomac cleaned yeah, him out him, and yeah. then started the demise of his professional career to this point, to this yeah. comeback, yeah. where he is back with a vengeance. The comeback of comebacks. Yep. Mate, I, I'm going to absolutely lose my mind when Dean wins the main event this year. Going to yeah. be good. It is going to be epic. Oh, yeah, what a, lo- what a lord intense. Dino is. I know, man. Actually, we should... Oh, I can't text him. My phone's not there. We need to get uh, Dean on here at some point. Yeah. Should, I, should we message the Rumble and tell him to uh, scooch on over to uh, the uh, casting couch? Yeah, we, we've got an appointment yeah. on the uh, on the casting couch for, for <laughs> young for young Dean. Yeah. Uh, coming up on the show today, we have no idea. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we have no idea, followed by also no idea. <laughs> we are basically just going to be sitting here and talking until somebody else wants to come on. I have just realised that we're actually podcasting from the wet area. From the wet a- area? AKA the bar. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, that's that, this was very, very strategic. How good is say. that? No one has bought me a drink that yet, though. Oh, is there drinks available? I don't know. Surely, well, I mean, it's surely, 2 o'clock. Surely, surely happy hour's about to surely. kick off. I am not going to be hey, mad at having someone a drink. that's standing over there, are we allowed to drink beers yet? Is there any... <laughs> Wait, Rob. Is there any beers available there yet? Is there any beers? Can you get us some booze? <laughs> <laughs> Rob from Nobby, absolute lord. He, he will, su- he will supply be... if it can be supplied. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Rob, chasing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We uh, got to maybe talk a little bit about the experience uh, in the Sky Lounge yesterday. Listen, Part of... listen, I fully shit myself going up there in that Dude, elevator. When you see, like, cause, so we're in the Sky, the, like the... Uh, like the Auckland Sky Tower and then you're going through you get in the elevator and it's like normal elevator normal elevator normal elevator shit normal elevator normal elevator and then you're 53 stories up over the, the well, city where, skyline where, where, you, where we were yesterday was 50 but then, it's, oh, then the okay. bar up the top is 53 which we also tried to go to bow, oh, bow. shut down that's oh, okay no. And I tell you what, if Rob can't make it happen then it mustn't it mustn't exist then it's not a thing it's not real hardest working man in undies right there yeah Look at him go. Jats, what a man. Who are you texting, mate? 
Are we boring you already? Dino. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay, okay, good. Good work. Telling him to get his ass over here. Yeah, I wonder yeah. I wonder who else is over there. <laughs> Bruce so, Bruce from Nitro Circus just went past. Oh, oh big bad Brucey. Big bad oh, Brucey. Oh, oh. You were on his flight, right? Yeah. You guys were on the flight. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was out the front. I was in the middle. So Pleb. What um what is what is Fist doing in New Zealand at the moment? Me, I'm I'm just Hanging out. No, but yeah. fist in. Oh, we're just about to. Uh, you guys, we're just, we're you just guys about launch to, them? Yeah, we're just about to start up over here with our uh, distribution 101. Um, with uh, old Bin. With Bin and uh, Brody and Rennie, all the boys. So um yeah, and Ash. Boys. So right now, how <laughs> does it work? Do you guys do you guys ship from Australia to New Zealand? No, no, no. So we go from the factory straight to to China. I mean. For, no, but I mean, without this distribution, how did it work before? Oh, yeah, 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 just from, from Oz. So people could just buy online, but we never had, like, store distribution. Yeah, So okay. now um, now it'll be available through everyone. Hopefully. So it's just a full fist takeover. Wow. Yeah. NZ gets well, fisted. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, it's going to be a lot better than it has been. No, 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 so it'll be available to everyone. Whatever Kiwis need some, uh, need some gloves, then uh, they've got you covered. Done. Done. <laughs> so, Jats, what um, what are you expecting tonight? Have you had any good results in the mud? I mean, I guess I haven't gone too bad in the mud before. I guess. I mean, don't last guess. Mud Tell race. us exactly what you yeah. think. <laughs> Stop sitting on the fence. I don't know. You'd never know with these bloody things. Get whoever a good gets start, a start anyone. really. Yeah, whoever freaking pulls the hole, he's got a good shot at winning it. Well, I'm 69% just sixty nine percent chance just of stop, winning. Just just stop. I just realised that you're triple camoing. <laughs> <laughs> Damn right I am. <laughs> Just stop, he says. I just do not want to be seen. No, yeah. well, clearly I'm not. blending in with this couch. All, we, yeah. all you're wearing is taco socks. That's yeah. it. <laughs> and red shoes. What the hell are these red shoes and taco socks doing without a, a body? Without an owner. Yeah. <laughs> Invisibility cloak. This yeah. is this is Jats flying well under the radar. Yeah. yeah. Cannot get any more under the radar than this. Full you're completely under the radar. Yeah. Anyway, keep going with So when was your last mud race that you guess happened? That you guess you did all right Jaboomba in? Jaboomba last year. All right. How yeah. did you guess you went all right in that? Yeah, I went okay, I guess. I got four. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, I guess. Yeah. Good. yeah. Who won, won it? it? Jay Wilson. Jay Wilson. Jay Wilson. Yeah, so there you go. I mean, didn't just win. Absolutely blew all of our doors off. <laughs> what did you he, was he on a dry truck or something? How I think he was. I don't know. Some dudes can just fully press the send button in the mud. Oh, yeah, 100%. He was, I mean, I know I was rolling everything. And I he think was you just still need, sending I think, the triple. I think you just need to remove your give a fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Just send it. Yeah, that's the that's the the wet thing. Yeah. Dude, I remember I remember doing uh, races, and I just it was like I just had one speed. So if you took like a lap time of me in the dry, and then you took a lap time of me in the mud, it was the same, same thing. Same. Yeah. It was just like that was yeah. just the that was just the cap. That was as fast as I wanted to go. It doesn't matter if it was in the snow or in the mud. I feel maybe, you, bro. Maybe Jay Wilson's like that. He's just like, he can just go the same speed. He's Actually, that's like, true. Yeah. That's very true. Wet, dry, don't matter. I'm just, don't, I'm not going to go faster than this, whether you give me the best conditions or the, or the worst <laughs> conditions. But yep. as we speak, it is, it looks like it's easing a tiny bit. I'll yeah. settle down. <laughs> Compared to what we had. <laughs> yeah. Mate. It was pissing down a second same, ago. Same, same, yeah, I reckon. It was really coming down before. Uh, how much is the track covered right now? Is that, did they I end up putting covers back on? Look. Turn around and have a little look. Yeah, you know what? I'll have a sticky peek. Nah, yeah, they've got some covers back on. They do have the covers. Oi, we have I to make I feel like it. we're at the cricket. Got on. the covers down. Yeah, yeah. You got the covers on. Lunch delay. Uh, rain delay. Rain delay. Yeah. Uh, man, the boys have absolutely killed it, though. Like, uh, Ben Townley was on the podcast yesterday, which is unreleased. Probably got some, uh, I don't know when I'll put it up, because I actually want to take some holidays. <laughs> so I'm, like, not going oh, so to release it. I need to take some holidays, because I, I need to press upload. What do you mean you're going up, on I need holidays. to press upload. Yeah. <laughs> No, but I just don't want to do more of them over Christmas. Nice. People aren't going to be around, oh, bro. Geez. Well, they don't need to be around. You're there was something con- on the internet. You are on a constant holiday. Yeah, people, I need to take a holiday Mate, you're a professional gypsy. <laughs> take a holiday from a holiday. Oh, that's a thing, right? Well, Is that a thing? Apparently. I'm not relaxing enough. Well, I either way. More time yeah. off. Either way, it's a thing. He needs to just put to himself to sleep yeah. for like six months. <laughs> <laughs> Gypsy hibernation. Big time. <laughs> but, all right, so I don't know when it'll be out. But what I was trying to say is he uh, was saying how stoked he was on this event because from Tuesday till now, they've been doing, like, radio and TV and all this different stuff. And they actually, 
I don't know for sure, but I heard that they'd actually sold 25,000 tickets pre-sale yeah. for this thing. So it's they massive. have packed this bitch out, mm. which I think is one of the coolest things to happen in, uh, in Supercross in the Southern Hemisphere, maybe ever. Yeah, mm. it's sick. I mean, I guess it's New Zealand's kind of like Tassie, like myself being from Tasmania. Well, when, everything is about Tassie with you, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, well, it's because everything is about <laughs> Why'd Tassie. Why'd you leave, man? Well, <laughs> you like it so much, why don't you Go marry back. it? <laughs> um, so, Wait, um, Tassie's probably the only place that would let you marry Tassie, too. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. You want to marry Tassie? Sure. Yeah, yeah, you why, know you're related. Why don't, why don't you? You know you're related. <laughs> but, but what I was going to say is, like, because not that much stuff happens, people, like, really... Really want to get behind well, it. Well, they really support it because they want... First of all, they want to see something, but secondly, they want it to come back. Yeah. So, I've always like that's how it's always been in Tassie as well. Yeah, and I guess New Zealand's the same because they don't really see much of this stuff. So when it happens, they're like, "Shit, we like we need to go and, mm. and make sure that it comes back and you know support it, so we get more of this stuff." You know. Yeah, definitely. And like what Ben was saying too is that. New Zealand doesn't really have like marquee riders on like a world stage at the moment. There was like a steady flow with like Daryl King and Shane King and then Hurley mm. and then they had, uh, who else am I missing? Josh Coppins and then obviously you had Ben. So there was like these, uh, these guys that young, the younger generation could aspire to be just like we had with like Chad Reed, Manny, yeah. Bernard, those guys. But now it sort of seems like those guys have stopped in New Zealand and it, I feel like it makes kids... Uh, have less of like a goalpost to sort of aim at yeah. and it, it makes them think that maybe that's it there is no yeah, more yeah, Ben because, Townley yeah. you know but I think that people need to know it's possible for sure and I think that if if you can't have a marquee rider that you're following you almost need to have like a marquee event that you can aspire to be at and I guarantee you that there's going to be a gang of little 12 year old legends on 85s that are going to watch this race tonight mm-hmm. And they're going to say, like, they're going to leave in the car and, and go, hey, mum, I'm going to race. I want to be the Nets next Jats Ritzo. I want to be the next Jats Ritzo. <laughs> I wish I could have seen him, though. Like, I only saw his boots, but, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> you only have these taco socks on. It's weird. His, Still don't know who was riding his bike. His boots, <laughs> his boots and bike look good. I want to know who was riding your bike for the first, like, eight races of the season. Well, yeah, I know, yeah I know, let's <laughs> talk about that. I know you were there for the last two. Yeah, the, the last two races. Yeah, the last two races of the yeah. season. Where were you for the rest of them? Yeah, well, I actually got a stunt double in after the first race at Oz X, and then, you know, the stunt double took care of the rest. He got two whole shots. Oh, so it was you two. for the it for was you for the one, first? Yes. Okay, yeah, yeah. okay, yep. Yeah, and then, like, once you ride into the tunnel, I just quickly did the switcheroo, and old mate jumped No, 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 he just me. chucked his gypsy tails <laughs> on, yeah. and just, woof. <laughs> <laughs> and disappear. Yeah. But but really it was a pretty tough season for you, um, coming into all of this one. Was it mm. a case of just you not feeling a hundred percent with like your shoulder injury or was it just you just did not have time to do it properly coming into the season? Whoa. Oh, perfect. Here we go. Yeah, we're we're yes. on. We're disco, now. disco. Yeah. Disco, disco that and make the fish. That is what I am talking about. <laughs> you know what? I'm not mad disco, at it. Yeah. Disco I'm, podcast. Does it look yeah. all right on the My camera? favorite. Is it blowing its way out? Just don't worry yeah. about it. Looks nah, like a rave. Look, yeah, let's Perfect. just keep it. Let's just well. keep it rolling. Yeah, maybe we'll, we'll get, maybe yeah. we'll get bags in here to spin some decks for yeah, us. Yeah, why not? Spin sure. some ducks for us later. Yeah, bro. Head on the dick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what we talking? Yeah, yeah. So how hard is it to yeah, sort of come let's back? Let's get back to yeah. chance. <laughs> let's Jesus. get back to that. Yeah. Nah. Oh, I mean, it, the whole season was like a real struggle. I mean, for starters, I wasn't even really expecting to be back for Supercross with the injury that I had, and I was lucky to make it back in time. So my preparation wasn't good, but I still felt okay. It was just like the races on the weekend, just my race craft, you know. I definitely wasn't aggressive enough and like, yeah, I just didn't have the intensity of the other guys. And then I slowly started picking it up. And I mean, it's it's kind of sucks because it's a short series as well. So you don't, so like... If, Hard like, to build momentum. Yeah, exactly. And like the first two rounds went like really bad. And I was like, oh shoot, well... Like kind of after you're that, kind of out like, of it yeah, at that point. Yeah, by that time, like because it's only a five round series, you're out of it already. And then, yeah, I got like better. My results improved a little in the next two, but like my race craft was way better. But like really, I just struggled with starts because um, we've been doing this triple crown format like for the last, well, three rounds now, and we're about to do it again tonight. And you got to get a start in it, especially with the field. And how quick these guys are going. Like, especially with the field we had in uh, the 250 class this year, it was gnarly. So, yeah, it's kind of hard to come from the back and, like, 
try and come past guys like Malros and Jay and Jacob Hayes and all those guys, yeah, it's hard to freaking come from the back and beat them. But then, yeah, I just kept riding, stuck to a plan, and then, you know, like, it finally come around at Oz X, yeah. So, um, no, it was good to at least finish the season on a high. And, like, I started the series in 10th. I made it back to 5th, so I was pretty stoked with that as well. Top 5. Top 5. Top 5, get yeah. It up, get it up, yeah. Yeah, definitely. And then, so, as of right now, you, you don't have a ride for next year, or are you still I trying to work it out? I am currently completely unemployed until the... 30th of this month. No, we'll say so you're employed until the 30th. Employed until the 30th, And yes. then you're unemployed as of the and 30th. And then I'm unemployed as of the 30th, yes. So if anyone's chasing... Jats is... If you Jats are is chasing... Available. Yeah. <laughs> Jats is looking. <laughs> or if you have any openings available at a coffee shop, makes I will throw my resume cafe. at you. Makes yeah. it, I can attest that Jats <laughs> makes a mean cappuccino. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so, nah. So then you decide to... Why did you want to ride the 450 tonight instead of the 250? You know, like, I've had my eye on this event for a while. Like, really, since they announced it, because it's not a part of our series, I was I was thinking, you know, like, I really want to see how I go on a 450. I've ridden the 450 a bit. I like it. You practice a bit on the I 450, I practice right? a lot on the 450, yeah. And, um, like, especially, like, with all the guys coming over here and stuff i was like you know what i want to try and get over here and see how i go up against these guys and you know see see how things go and yeah like just get a bit of experience on it and what better place to do it than right here yeah and it's a pretty like it it feels low-key right now it's yeah. because like i think it's rad and i i sort of wish people after being here this weekend i sort of wish more events would have it to where it's like all the riders are together in the pits. Yeah. Like, yeah. the vibe is sick today, oh, man. Dude, and it's like, awesome. Yesterday, we were all kind of hanging it's out. It's so talking segregated shit. normally. It mm, is, man. Yeah. It is. And it, it makes it feel like, uh, I don't know, like, just a way more tense sort of vibe. No one's really yeah. talking. Whereas yeah. here, like, because realistically, man, like, the dudes are all friends. Like, you yeah. guys are all yeah, cool with it. each other. You, yeah. You're all going through the same stuff. Mm. So, it's like, it's sort of... I don't know. It, it's been really fun. It's got more of like an X Games vibe to it because X Games it does, is yeah. like that. Mm. It is a bit more freestyly because whenever you go to a freestyle event, like they like everyone's bikes are usually yeah, it's the same, same deal yeah. under like one marquee and like everyone's mm. all sorted together. They've got their own little area, but they're all parked together, sort of thing. There's no semis. There's no like places to hide. And mm. look, I'm <laughs> gonna yeah. I'm gonna be honest here. If um if they sell all the semis, maybe people can have some money to give you a ride. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> Seems like there's a lot of money in fucking trucks out there that we just don't need to <laughs> be, be sure. spending. sure. A lot of Definitely. money in plant and equipment. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then, Big like, time. dude, just the fuel bill could pay for another rider. I've got a 99 yeah. high ace just, like, hanging out if you need it. Yeah. Oh, mate. A 99 <laughs> high ace, say yeah. no more. Yeah. It's the full race Actually, aspect. how about the high ace we've been able to rent for the last couple of days? <laughs> Man, wait, seriously? We, yeah. we drove... Well, you heard the stereo last mate, night. Yeah, as I we got to hear it. the Stezza. Yeah. It it were you full hard. Jats mixing through there? Oh, yeah. We actually oh, yeah. I've had the SoundCloud hooked up, pushing <laughs> the stereo to its complete limit. Yeah, we, we got in that thing is, is last Pedro, night. Is Pedro into the music that no. you uh, Pedro play? is... No, he's not a fan of it whatsoever. <laughs> no. Nah. Actually, when we go to the tracks in the morning, because I like to obviously fire play it, it loud and <laughs> fire it up before we go... He uh, opts to run earplugs <laughs> on the way really? to the track. Yeah. yeah, he does, man. He yeah, does he crazy. proper runs earplugs to the track with me. Yeah. Hey, uh, hey, Gussie, Gussie boy, have we got any riders on the on the horizon? <laughs> I'm a rough rider, not a runner. <laughs> have you have you got a steel, Sam? Sam, yep. you're oh, out. I'll be I'll be back. Oh, important send, business to send. Tend to. Send some riders. Okay. Yeah. People will get sick of me and Jats real quick. Yeah. So Jats. You like stuff? <laughs> I love stuff. <laughs> what were we just talking about? Oh, the 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 right the track uh, driving to the track. Yeah. yeah. Look, old Pete. He's never really been like a literally quote from him is just don't play that rap shit. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. He's not a fan of it at all. And definitely when it gets to a certain volume limit, he'll either turn it back down himself or the earplugs just go in. Yeah, hundred percent. And that's it. Yeah. So let's talk about the, uh, we'll get your opinion on the riders list tonight, yeah. uh, starting with the great Chad Reed. 
Speedy Reedy. Speedy Reedy. We're, we're just going to go, we're just going to do like a little bit of a form guide, I reckon. Oh, so, so I, Chad I just got to, I just got to, we're just going to throw names out there and I got to tell you what I think. Yep, yep. Where are they going to stack up in the field? Where are they going to stack where's up? Their, you know, where's their form guide? How are you feeling about their chances to win? Uh, so yeah, first cab off the ranks is old uh, Speedy Reedy. Reedy? I could, de- I mean, easily, I mean, for sure it's, I'm going to see him land on the box, definitely. Where? I'm not sure. It wouldn't surprise me if he takes a win. He's good in the mud. So, yeah. And then, um, so yeah, then we'll from, see. So, from there, we'll go with the man on the, the number one plate, Justin Brayton. He yeah. is a specialist in the Triple Crown format. So, yeah. he's he won the he won Triple Crown races in the States this year, right? When they did that format. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, JB, yeah, he has um, produced some of the goods like over in the States this year in the Triple Crown and then I mean over here as well like he's done really well so yeah we'll see I'm not too sure how JB goes in the mud though so we'll see but I mean really if you can get a start here like that's like half the battle right there yeah I mean definitely with the mud for sure so we'll see where JB stacks up like see it see how everyone goes in practice really we just got to see how the track turns out yeah that's true old um so then next we'll go down to uh brett metcalf i would i would say that Meddy is almost like a mud specialist in a way definitely like yeah. he always seems to Meddy produces in the wet conditions he really sure. does yeah. yeah so yeah. I, I feel like uh yeah the adelaide the adelaide boy he's due for a win as well i think I feel so as well, yeah. Be, yeah, be sick if we could see Medi up on the box. I yep. freaking love that guy. Dude, yeah. I'd be, Good dude. I'd be so pumped to see Medi, Medi take the win. Oh, um, yeah. So then we've got maybe the the wild card of the event is Josh Hansen. What do you make yes. of old, uh, old, old Hanny coming over for this one? Dude, Hanny, I mean, hey, if he lands on the box, that wouldn't surprise me one bit. That guy has got that much bike skill. It's ridiculous. And... Um, yeah, I mean, I know he's been doing a lot of supercross. I mean, you know, like, maybe not like, you know, like doing the proper supercross training, but I don't think it matters for that guy. He nah. could just rock up out of no. He could rock up and not train at all and come out and, like, do good at one of these things. Like, he's just that ridiculous on a dirt bike. So, that is, a, I, I guess, like, a good question then is, like, what's the fitness requirements like for a full mudder is it harder to do a 20 lapper in normal conditions at full speed than it is to do a 20 lapper in the mud that's a good question i mean i guess it's like it'd almost be harder doing a 20 lapper in the mud because you're like you're muscling the bike around a lot more and the bike's twice as heavy with all the stuff and then like you got your mud on your helmet all that stuff and you got so much other stuff to contend with other than like whether the in a 20 lap main you're just trying to go as fast as you can and make the obstacles yeah whereas you're trying to just get over the obstacles this yeah. time and like keeping the thing upright and then like it takes energy to like keep the thing upright when you're falling over yeah so yeah, yeah by the end of it you're almost half smoked just and like you're not even doing the jumps and i guess too like the thing with that is as well is that you get a certain like muscle memory yeah when it comes to like doing your doing your laps and doing your training and stuff like that and like it's like whenever if you're like really used to doing squats and then you do deadlifts even though it's like the same weight because it's a different movement yeah you're like way sore because you're using these like different muscles that you're not used to using absolutely yeah for sure yeah, so that kind of makes sense. Mm. So then, uh, so we've, all right, so then we've got Christian Craig. And yeah. Him and Hanson are probably the two most stylish dudes, maybe ever. 100% agree. Maybe yeah. ever on a dirt bike. Yeah, CC, he's got some good bike skills as well. And, I mean, he's good in the wet conditions too. So, yeah, he could, yeah, he could definitely be a dark horse for the win mm. as well. And I think too, like, his, um, he's, He's a specialist on the 450 too, man. Like Definitely. When him and Cooper had that really crazy season a couple of years ago um, where they were battling for the West Coast Championship when yeah. Cooper ended up winning it. Uh, and his speed was just incredible there. But I feel like we were seeing him not... Uh, like because he hadn't raced like the series for a while, I think like his fitness and racecraft almost let him down a little bit there. Mm, um, yeah. But like speed wise, he's just insane, and he's such yeah. a gamer, and he always gets good starts. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, no, he's got the starts on point. 
and i mean he's like yeah he's consistent as well and like yeah like just so much bike skill and like just the way he moves on the bike and that it's just yeah it's awesome like it's good to watch yeah, I, I honestly think him and Hanson are two of the best looking dudes on a bike Absolutely, of all time. Absolutely, yeah, 100% agree. Uh, so, for, oh, and the other thing, man, he's in like full-blown soupy mode, dude. Yeah, like yeah, he's coming blown. in with a head of steam, for yeah. sure. Yeah, big yeah. time. <laughs> uh, and then, so then we'll go to Dino, Scottish Wizard. Uh, yeah. he, he'll be good in the mud. Scottish Thunder. The Scottish Thunder. Yeah, yeah that's, um, I'm a fan of that. Yeah, yeah. With, with Dean, too, like, it seems like as well the tall guys always seem to do a little bit better in the mud yeah yeah definitely got like, a bit more leverage yeah. yeah and you can kind of get like up and out but then again like sometimes when those ruts get like insanely deep mm. you can actually uh you can sort of go against you yeah. in a way yeah definitely oh, because I mean, like it's hit and you've, miss. yeah you've got to put it you know you got to get your legs like so much further up and out of the way yeah definitely yeah, so here we got sure. Dino. Who else is it? Dude, it's a stacked field, bro. Super like, stacked. Listen to the names that we've just gone Super through Super stacked. And then you got like a few of us 250 guys stepping up. You got the regular 450 guys. You got Cloudy, Boppo, Longy. Oh, no. Who have we got here? Look out. The Scottish Thunder has just rolled in. We've the claimed him. <laughs> the Scottish Thunder. The Scottish Thunder's rolling in. Come on, mate. Get in here. Jump on the casting couch. <laughs> you what? What's he doing? Oh, he's got to blow his nose. Oh, bless. Oh, wait, is he getting a beer? <laughs> yeah, tell him to fire up the kegs. Punch the kegs, bro. <laughs> Tap that thing. Should we end this podcast with a keg stand? <laughs> <laughs> <I'm>... <laughs> yeah, I yeah. agree. So who else? Yeah, so then we've got... Uh, who else is up in, the, in that 450 class? Um... We're obviously forgetting people. Well, well, like I said before, you got, you got yourself. Yeah, we got me. We got Mel Ross. Is Will, Mel Ross doing? He's on a three fifty. He's on a three fifty this weekend. Yep. He'll be quick. And then um, uh, you got well, you got your regulars. You got Cloudy, Boppo, Longy. Dude, hey, let's give Cloudy a shout out, man. What a season he's had. What a year. He yeah. was so fast, man. Yeah. Full sender as yeah. well. Yeah. Doesn't mind a full send. I really appreciated yeah. the way that he went after the 450 class this year. Absolutely, yeah. He took it head on this year and, like, come out swinging and outdoors. Had a good season, landed on the box. And then, yeah, put into a good one for Soupy. <laughs> Bloody Dean, working with rock stars. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Oh, now he's... Now what's he's he's doing a, now? Now he's got a pee. Oh, jeez. Fuck out, these Scottish guys, eh? He's not a pro at all. Nah. He's not pro. He, uh, look, the iron bladder comes into play when you're yeah. in the podcast. You just got to put it out of your mind. Yeah, that's it. You just got to not think about it and keep on pressing. So we, we haven't mentioned Uncle Ronnie. Yeah, you're right. We haven't. Dude, I want Ronnie to line up in the main. I believe I feel like he's he got should be that. lining up in the Triple Crown format. I think it's just... That's a real dark horse dude, in the wet weather. The greatest of all time. Yeah. The GOAT. The GOAT, yeah. It, I mean... It's such a shame to me that they call Ricky Carmichael the GOAT. Yeah, I feel like there is definitely, there should be an asterisk next, next to his, to, yeah. yeah oh, for sure. Because, yeah. like, really, what's he won? Yeah, really? I mean, what, five national championships, couple soupy titles. Yeah, I think he won ten championships, and it's like, but Ronnie wasn't yeah. at any of them. Yeah. And it was all just, yeah. like, political stuff. Here he is, the yeah, Scottish yeah. Thunder. He's back, he's are emptied you, the bladder, you, and he's in. This is you, bro. Get on the casting couch, bro. Headphones are there. You just yeah. we're on. Oh man, this is this Whoa. is a good day. What a time to be alive. How are we uh, looking? You want to run there? Oh, are you good? Ooh. Oh yes. It's all bloody. It's all happening. The the, the rain's just really hampered the setup mm. here. So mate, you've had a week, Hello? eh? Yeah. Hello? You've had a week to get to this point, eh? Yeah, it's been been interesting week for sure. Just um. <laughs> So we, uh, I, I did a writing school on the Gold Coast. It was awesome. Had a good time, but. and uh, yeah, just everything was going good. Like I even rode. I wasn't going to ride, but like, oh, can you ride? I was like, yeah, sure. So I was riding with the kids and and you know the other, you know, even the older guys, and just doing some laps with them while they were doing their open practice. And then we're having like a sweet time. And then we're working on a section, like a corner, but you know, uh, there was a jump before it, and I parked my bike on the side, and then I. Uh, Sarah was standing on the side and yeah this guy just jumped and lost complete control and nailed my bike and nailed Sarah 
and broke my bike and obviously broke Sarah's nose. <laughs> oh. <laughs> For Sarah, it was honestly, she got hit so hard. It was like... Dang. She got was, out of it good. Yeah, really. she like was... The bike was like on top of her and she like weaseled her way out and there was just blood everywhere. Oh. And then it was like... Yeah, it was it was pretty scary. It was gnarly. Like she got. What did you think? Like, did you think it was worse than just a broken nose at the start? I don't know what to think. It was like real dramatic because I like <laughs> ran and then like, like I ran so fast on the spot. Like she actually has a video of it. But I, I first I got out the way and then I looked and then I see that I'm going straight for Sarah, and then Sarah has the camera because she was filming me like you know, uh, coaching the kids and then. Like, all she just gets drilled, and that's what I seen. And I started running towards her, but I was running so fast, I was like losing traction on my feet. Like, I was like, I was like running on the spot, like a cartoon character. So, yeah, she got hammered by the bike bad, so it was pretty gnarly. She's a tough cookie, but eh? She is, she is. Dude, she went out that night, yeah. just like, yeah. just charged, just didn't so, let her bother, yeah. bother her. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a shame. It was just, yeah, a little bit of a bummer, but these things happen, accidents happen, so it is what it is. Here we are in Auckland. The past two days have been absolutely beautiful. Oh, dude. That's like, what we're I, I mean, not yeah. even a cloud in the sky. And then today has just been non stop rain. So, as what it is, got to uh, deal with what we have, have fun with it. Is that it? was um, that powerboat deal yesterday, looked pretty sick. That powerboat deal yesterday was so fun. It's like little mini jet boats. Yeah. And what I kept get, getting confused about was like, there were so many different colors, uh, little floaties on the you know oh, on, the, yeah, yeah. on the water and like so the track like you had to go in between them and I kept getting confused so like the first like honestly like the first three or four times like I'd kind of mess the course up and then the last one like it, it was lap times I actually got the course right and dude I wrecked the, the lap and then uh, I ended up with being the fastest it was actually pretty funny but they were so fun you're just like wide open and it's like going around the corners it's like if you're on a dirt bike like if you bury the, like a yeah, burn it'll and you lose in. all your speed yeah, yeah. so like you kind of have to be like real smart with it it was fun though it was awesome Un Uncle Ronnie put it up on the uh, he like rode it out the water got all yeah, sketchy dude. he fully beached it he yeah. committed to yeah, yeah he, he uh, the guy was not happy <laughs> he, I think when he we left stoked. the guy that owned that, that joint was like so happy to see Ronnie leaving like yeah not happy <laughs> dude uh and who was in second place did it feel Chad, quite good Chad oh. it did feel good because I know Chad low key took that serious inside Bro, he so, takes everything yeah. serious so though. I was like obviously I was just doing it for fun but like then it, I went up first and then I got fastest lap and then he, first time he wasn't really too close second time he wasn't close third time I beat him by 100 of a second I was uh <laughs> What was that? A, a, uh, twenty like four point zero eight. I was, and he was a twenty four point zero nine. Oh, <laughs> oh wow. so you know I'm rubbing salt in the wind stinging. on that one. Oh yeah, be stinging. Uh, yeah. Would have felt so sweet. Well, yeah, no, it was, it was like it was honestly like really fun. It was like, just something different. That's what's cool about coming over to these events is like they do like have these this yeah. cool stuff set up for us. Um, yesterday I missed the bungee jumping which I was or two days ago I missed the bungee jumping you wanted jumping. to do that too oh eh? yeah that would have been fun Dude, I yeah, like see, those I'm not thrills. about that life eh? I yeah. like those thrills like, I like the thrills that like you could potentially die that excites me <laughs> <laughs> have you have you thought about that and why that is yeah. is there something going on uh, there it's just yeah. that feeling of like if it goes wrong you're dead but yeah. at least like if it goes wrong on a bungee jump like hopefully it's just instant and we're not like I don't want to suffer like yeah. if that yeah. bungee cord just snaps like just yeah. ending me like I'm not trying to lay down there suffering nah so I yeah. just feel like if, if you do it it's going to be a really good time or you're going to you're not even gonna know. Yeah, <laughs> so, <laughs> it's I like mean, it's like yeah, a win-win. I don't know. Weird. It's like fun, or that's it, and there's just the curtain closes, and you don't even know it's closed. Like, yeah, I feel like I could be one of those guys that, you know, when they're uh, they're like, it's kind of dumb, really, but you know, like when they go on high rises and then they just yeah. like cheat death, like they'll hang. Oh, and, yeah. I feel like I could kind of do that. Like, really? Oh, yeah. See, I'm not on that program at all. I maybe wouldn't not take it to some it. of the extent they do, but like something sketchy like that I, I could see myself so doing. you're the dude that when like you uh at like a cliff or a waterfall you're oh, yeah. like toes over the edge yeah. and everyone else is like yeah, yeah, what yeah. are you doing you're or that like guy high hotel room and like you can get out the window and there's like a little thing like you know it's just ah, dude, you, know, you know you know you know bro brodo yeah so we're at uh we're at eli's uh sorry we're at daytona this year and uh we had like a balcony and we were like 20 something stories up 
And then Eli decides to get out and, like, dangle his feet over the balcony. And it was, like, schoolies week or whatever the... Whatever that is. Spring break. Spring break, yeah. 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 So then there's just, like, all these people, dude. And they're, like, screaming and, like, pointing and shit. And I was like, hey, man, like, it's kind of funny, but I think you need to get inside now. Yeah. And then so we were all in there. Wes was... uh, Had no idea we were doing it. So then... We, like, 20 minutes later, we're all just chilling inside this hotel room. And then the cops come to the front door. And they're like, hey, uh, I'm pretty sure there was, like, somebody on your balcony just now. And, like, that's, like, super illegal. Like, was it you guys? And Wes is like, nah, man, it wasn't any of us. And then we're all just sitting there, like, trying not to say anything. And then Wes gets in, like, a full-blown argument with these cops because they start, like, pressing the issue. Really? He has no idea. And we're like, these co- you could tell the cops are going, like, man, this is, like, an Oscar-winning performance that this guy is putting on, yeah, like, yeah, in yeah, denial. Yeah. And, then and he actually genuinely didn't know. And he just generally oh, didn't know. And, yeah. and all of us are just sitting there, like, trying to keep our mouth shut. And we all look so guilty, dude. <laughs> and then Wes has generally had no idea. He's like, and then the cops left. He's like, can you believe those assholes? And we are like, yeah, Eli was out on the balcony. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! It was just like, what are you doing? There's Wes sticking his neck out for you, yeah. dude, and he was genuinely so angry at these oh. cops too, because he was like, "Dude, we're here for work. Like, we wouldn't do any of that." Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, it turns out we did. So, yeah. but uh, Eli's that guy too, apparently. That'll just like send it off the hotel. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not that guy. No, no. Don't need that. No. Talk about sending it. Uh, what are your expectations in the mud? Have you had good mud races? Um. I don't know. I feel like it got long legs, so that's like a plus. Yeah, we're just, just talking get the about starts, that. man. It's honestly the starts, and then staying clean. Like, you know how much time you lose just trying to like wipe mud off you or like get your tear offs or like oh, when yeah. you hole shot, you don't even have to ride fast. Literally, just like roost the guys behind you as much as you can. <laughs> Fish tail down the start straight. Make them pull tear offs, and then just do all the obstacles. Be smooth. Be clean. That's uh, Jeff's keys to the race. Yeah. Jeff's keys to the motor. No, what is it? The keys to the motor? KTM keys to the motor? No, it's Jeff's keys is to the Jeff's? race, isn't it? Oh. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. Number Jeez. one on Jeff's every weekend. Get, Get the whole stuff. shot. Get a good start. <laughs> you know Get what? Get a good start. <laughs> I remember, I remember uh, every week I'd literally think like, all right, can we just take Get the Start off? Like, or can we just put it You're not allowed to use as, like, start. 1A and yeah. then let's yeah. go to 1B? Yeah, like, yeah. We, can't, we can't go down that road. Yeah. No, so... Uh, for the mud, just send it, really. Did you grow up riding much mud in Scotland? Yeah. How old yeah. were you when you left to go to Canada? I was like eight and a half or nine. I can't remember the exact age because I was in between. Like, I know I was like definitely eight. I think I was nine. Yeah, okay. And you, you, you rode a bit of mud in oh, that time? Oh, dude, it rained all the time. It was always muddy. And do you think? And then in Canada, it wasn't really. In Canada, it wasn't really not a lot. A few mud races, but not not like Scotland's like same climate and stuff as here. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, it was pretty muddy. But and then when it would get cold in the winters in Canada, that's when we go to California. Yeah. Okay. So uh, that's how we ended up eventually moving to California. Do you like? Do you have guys when it's a mud race like this where you just know they're gonna kill it? Um, like maybe not here, but I like Chad, in the US. I feel like Chad's pretty good in the mud. Like when I say send it in the mud, Chad sends it in the mud. Like, like he 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 just kind of goes for it, and you need that mentality. Like my mentality in the mud sometimes is I'm t- I get too it's timid. Like cautious. I get cautious and timid because I don't want to fall. I don't want to fall, and then I don't really fall, but I'm just riding slow, mm. really slow. So, um. But it's like Kevin Wyndham though when it rained. You you could almost always say K Dub was gonna take the win when it was muddy. You know? Yeah. Like, dude, you know what? You're right, because I remember like Chad and K Dub would always have like insane mud battles, eh? I know. Mm. Dude, that Daytona that one year when was it Chad's bike or Kevin's bike? One of their bike exploded. Yeah, right it was the, it was Chad's bike. It was Chad's, huh? Honestly, the craziest mud race I've ever watched as in battle wise was like Seattle. I wanna say it was Seattle or San Fran, I can't remember. Two thousand six. It was like Bubba, Ricky. Yeah, I remember that one. Dude, yeah. Ricky was on Bubba's ass to the checkered, and it was like a full battle, and they're like cross rotten and like, <laughs> it, it's wild. Like, dude, wasn't yeah. there like I think a it was really? 06. It was 06. Wasn't there a gnarly one in Toronto as well, where all those boys like battled crazy in the mud? In Toronto? No, Toronto was a right one, but t- Toronto's a covered stadium. Oh but yeah. But I remember yeah. they brought in really soft dart one time, like, and it was crazy. It was like, it was frozen and then unfrozen, and it just got crazy right. Yeah. Oh yeah, dude. The mud, like, as much as it's a piss off for people to like race and then for the mechanics it yeah. sucks for you guys it's yeah. not as fun like 
God damn, it's exciting. <laughs> for, yeah. It's, but it's for so, fans. It, sometimes, not real. But it's like, sometimes the fans want to see some, like, you know, some getting air and webs yeah, and, like, yeah. you know, people writing kind of at their actual capabilities, where sometimes mud's like, it depends what mud you're talking about. Like, yeah. I'm talking rolling feet out. Like, I don't know if that's yeah. exciting. That, too. like, that A1 that Josh Grant won, that was mud. That was, like, real mud, right? No. no. Oh, we won the JG one. Yeah, JG one. What was, was the nah, What was the crazy A one mud race? That was O5. O5, Yeah. Carmichael launching the triple. Yeah. Uh, K Dub one. Yeah. I think Loraku got second. Dude, you I guys, it you guys are like, dude. That's the thing that I always would say about Jats. Like, Jats was a kid, right? Mm -hmm. And people would be like, Is Is Jats like? Is Jats all there? He doesn't yeah. say much. <laughs> and then you'd be like. You're like, no, yeah, no, he's, he's normal. <laughs> and then you'd be like, hey, Jats, who won, uh, who won Steel City Moto 2 2003? And he's like, Mike Brown won. This, and then yeah. Matt Walker got no, And you're like, no, 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 he's good, he's there. Like, he just doesn't my, say much. My school IQ and school me have not been great. But oh, when you yeah. want to talk more across, obviously I love this sport. It's all I watched as a kid. I can go back to like, my mo IQ, I can go pretty even. I can go deep into the nineties, like really? yeah, oh, like that far back. Not super far back, but like the two thousands, definitely. Like yeah, yeah. yeah I, for uh, sure. This kid's a freak, and he's like yeah. that with NFL stats too, man. Oh, yeah. But like, it's just uh, like he just saves all of his like mental capacity for that. He's yeah. just like, you know what? I'm just gonna go deep in. Uh, I'm just gonna go deep in moto and stats and stuff. That's yeah. it. That's why, like, if I ever see like a old one of the OGs, like. Even in Australia, I, I watch old school Australian races. Like but I remember watching one where the dudes dropped their bikes and started like pushing each other. It was I think it was Danny Ham and um, oh, yeah, and it was Ando. Yeah. Oh yeah, and then, back in the SX Master yeah, days. And then there's another one where Chad crashed. Like remember the one? It kind of went viral now, but remember before? Like he's on a Suzuki, crashed like four times. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. and then what well, other ones? When Pastrana and Chad were battling, and Chad was on his Cowie, yeah. and Pastrana was one. just like back in one case and yeah. stuff, and he like. Oh, he like launched off the track once. And he was like out of control, and then finally he like Kate comes up short on this triple and just grenades himself. <laughs> Chad won that night. It was like, and now I want to say that was like 2000 to 2001, one of those. Yeah. So who uh, who who else do you think could be like a, a real dark horse tonight out in this uh, out in this mud? Because it's gonna be muddy. Uh, who could be a dark horse? <sighs> uh, buh, 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 buh. dude, I don't. I don't know. Jats could be a dark horse. Nah, he's nah. Nah, nah. <laughs> he's not. Nah, Jats could be a dark horse. Any of the 250 boys that are here could be a dark horse. You yeah, know? Jay, I, we were saying Jay Wilson. He sent okay. it. At, at, You're right. Yeah, That's Jim a really Boomba. good. Yeah. See, there's nothing. I watched that race too. I watched it because obviously I was hurt and I just watched all these races. I watched uh, that mud race and he was jumping everything and he had a massive lead as well yeah that's what jet said like yeah. he wasn't just like trying to win he was trying to like yeah. make everybody feel like they weren't riders <laughs> yeah. yeah it was unreal i remember watching that i was like man that was crazy i wonder like where that comes from like i wonder oh, yeah. i think he's just confident and has good balance skills it's a lot of balance like jumping oh, yeah. in those ruts in the mud and like that's a, that's like i said like when you're in the lead yeah if you get in the lead you have that clear vision you're not all heavy like dude when you're in the back it it sucks. Yeah. You need to make passes quick. Yeah. Nah, yeah, I'm... Uh, Dean's keys to the race, make passes quick. <laughs> get, get the start. Get the start, get the start, get the start, and get the start. Yeah. Nah, it's been sick, man. Like, so you guys are going um, back on Sunday, back to the US. Pretty sure you still haven't booked a flight, but I know you will at some point. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, it's been a good trip. Yeah, so far it's been awesome. It's just been a bit of a rush trip. It's... What's kind of hard is like, obviously the DPH boys really looked after us, um, but it's just hard not really having like stuff when stuff goes wrong. Like I didn't have really a whole lot of parts or stuff yeah. like that. So it was really stressful in that department. But other than that, I had a great time. Got to visit, you know, more out back, like where Hayden lives. Check that out. Went to the Gold Coast. I've been there before, but enjoyed that. Um, but it'd be nice to like have a bit of time where I'm not just rushing to do everything, you know? Like, I the problem like is, like, the way that you guys, like, your season, man, like, it just mm -hmm. doesn't, like, you, there is no off-season. No, there really isn't. Like, if you get a week or two, that's not an off-season, you know? That's, like, mm -hmm. a small, small break, but um, that's why I think if, if you, you know, guys like Tomac, you know, he, I guess he did Des Nations and did Monster Cup, but he's had a successful season, made a lot of money. Like, m most of the time, you, that's why they don't do Des Nations or anything, like, it's, I think it's important to have that off season recover and have that time off, you know, because yeah, the off season gets hectic. But obviously for me, like these are really good races for me because I've missed 
A lot of rides. Yeah, uh, this riding. summer with my knee, so I like to be racing right now. But last year, I didn't stop racing. I raced 35 races last year, and it's quite yeah. a lot. Dude, it must have mm. felt good after everything that happened um, with the injuries before last year, mm -hmm. and then you come back. It, it, it's a bummer you got hurt at the start of the year, though, because, mm -hmm. man, like, uh, you looked really, really good at, at Anaheim in practice. Yeah. And then to have that, that crash, was that a case of you just feeling, like, really, really good and pushing it? Yeah, it was, it was unfortunate just because, obviously, I did all these off-season races last year, and then we went, and me and Jason, like, rode a lot together uh, before the season and, like, had a pretty gnarly boot camp, pushed it hard, went into Anaheim, and I really just wanted to, like, Oh, I was just like I, I was like more like hungry like I wanted to like go in and kill it and I was like fourth off the start in my heat race came around and I was like manual I was manualing this section but not like you still had to tap the front wheel a little bit and I, I was kind of close to bag it and I just got excited and I manualed and the front wheel just completely messed the top and it just oh it like I hit that that crash hurt so bad that crash like I, I pile drove the triple on my shoulder and to this day, my shoulder is honestly like 75%. It's Just unbelievable. Never come back. It's, I've been, I, I, I work on it every time I'm at the gym. I do my therapy exercises, but it just takes time. Like it feels a lot better, but trying to race throughout that whole season with that shoulder was unbelievable. It was so hard. And, uh, Oh, it was tough. And then, like, even sleeping at night, I couldn't, if I slept on that side, I'd wake up in the middle of the night and it'd be achy. It'd be like the worst injury. And, like, it was a, shoulder contusion bone bruise that's what they kept telling me and i went and got two mris i'm like this is just gnarly like and then i blew my knee out during supercross as well so i had a messed up shoulder and a blown knee and i just oof, just trying to like train during the week and it was just miserable like honestly it was really tough and um i still got a second got podium missed a few rounds uh obviously from my shoulder and ended up getting seventh in points so i, I mean I still like crawled my way back up a little bit, got a podium, a few top fives and tens, but um, then I was like, okay, I'm obviously, it's a contract year for me, so I need to just keep going. So after Vegas, I Glen Helen and then getting ready for outdoors because, um, you know, if I top five overall Supercross or Motocross, I'll get re-signed for the next year. Oh, was that in your contract? Yeah, and so I was like, you know, I got fourth the previous year and I'm pretty good outdoors. And then just unfortunately someone connected with me in the air and uh yeah was that, was that, at, a, was that at a practice track Glen Helen Thursday and it was just a random day that hit you oh uh, no he was a pro like a privateer guy yeah but still I mean yeah it was pretty disappointing for sure yeah because well, I mean, like it wasn't intentional obviously, no I mean it it's just, obviously like, it never is. pissed me off I'll tell you that much I couldn't believe it I was sitting in my truck afterwards with two blown knees just like yep I'm gonna have to uh get these things fixed hey you, you want to sub in you want to yeah. get it you want to get in here hayden? hayden come on yeah. jets you're done come on come get out. in here i've got the boot oh you got the boot i've jets? got the boot oh, get in here hayden come hayden, on hayden hayden swap you finish better in points in the lights class <laughs> hey hayden you want to give us a dance hey hayden you want to give us a dance for the fans no nah, nah? come on Come on, he, you've been trying so hard to copy Jatsy's dance moves. All right, check out my Michael Jackson Jats. dance moves. <laughs> get in, Jats, get in there. Give us one. Give us a, on. give us a Fortnite dance. Come on, in, Come in on. Yeah, front and center. Come on, one of these bad boys. Oh, oh, here we go. Wait, where's the spot? Where's the spot? Yeah, just wherever, man. Yeah, you're good. Oh, uh, uh, flossing. Wow, hips are. Whoa, oh. hey! hey. <laughs> <laughs> flossing on them haters, son. Too wow. Much Fortnite, are you right. are you working out them headphones or? Are we gonna? How long till you got them sorted, bro? Oh, give me a couple. Minutes, <laughs> hey, there he is. There he is. <laughs> All right, yeah, let's go. Is. Get those on. The boys, the boys from right, uh, what's the what's the name of the, what's the name of your town that you live in? Young. Young. The young. Yeah, the the, the youngins. I'm like I'm a, I'm a youngin now. You yeah, know, you're part a young of the, part of the young family. Hey, Hayden, keep that as close as you can to your face. You'll hear the difference. Pumping the music right now. Yeah, we're we're disco disco. <laughs> so, big dog stepping up on the 350. What you can't handle the 450, or what's that about? No, uh, you can never oh, handle the 450. So, yeah. I got um got a uh, you know Dean Wilson coming over, so he took my uh, took oh my he took I took his bike. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had two I had two allowed for me, and uh, since he come over, you know, just I got demoted, you know. Bloody. Broke one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Sent one back broken. Sorry, oh, mate. Oh yeah, no, nah, no good, but. 
350 is pretty good though. So. That dude, they're good, and I bet the 350 might be the black of choice. It tonight. may not be bad tonight. No, dude. definitely. I think the power to weight ratio, you know, like being a bit lighter. Uh, I think I'm in for a chance. <laughs> Big time. So hey, I'm, I'm not dating you. I'm yeah. not. I don't yeah. dare anybody. I'll tell yeah, you that yeah. much. Not, you never can. Not in the rain, anyway. So you, you can't really so you up. hear stories of guys that are like they're super good practice dudes or they're like but then they're not as good at racing or they're like just own the practice track own the racetrack in your in your experience at the practice track out in young where does uh where does this young lad stack up is he a, is he a sender because we know he can bring it on the race night is he a practice sender <laughs> still got the fastest lap team uh, on his yeah, track hang on, hang on, <laughs> that's on that hey, 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 friday the day before he left who, ooh, who won ooh, the last ooh. moto yeah, I had broken suspension. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep going. And a flat tire. <laughs> <laughs> Not joking. <laughs> Actually, generally had a flat tire, but I feel like he still feeling good off of that. Oh, yeah, <laughs> true, yeah. so I'm going to let him have it, you know. A little bit of confidence coming in is good, you know. Yeah, yeah, I'm that, carrying that. some momentum, yeah. that's yeah. for sure, yeah. you know. <laughs> But um, no, it was a good time. We, his track is sick. He's got an awesome track. What? Is, yeah, it's a sick facility. And it was facility, like, we, eh? dude, we were like when when I was staying heads, like obviously Hayden. Hayden was like my uh, training partner, mechanic. <laughs> he did it all. <laughs> and anyways, cook. yeah. yeah cook. <laughs> Hence why you got a broken sp uh, broken suspension and yeah. a flat tire. Yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. Uh, he, like, I'm surprised he didn't wipe my ass honestly. But <laughs> um, we had a great time. Like, but our days were like pretty hectic. It was like, wake up train Hold up, breakfast drink. uh get to the track uh you know water the track he'd be on the bobcat uh i'd be watering then he would hop on the tractor and we'd water get there get our gear on ride dermos like ride quite a lot like all day and then after that wash the bikes work on the bikes hit the gym get back he'll cook yeah. dinner <laughs> uh i'd work on my vlog Sorry, I'm not calling my the YouTube, not the, the vlog. The I don't call mine the, the vlog. Chub. The tube. The tube. And then, uh, dude, that was at dinner bed. Like it was just the days were flat, yeah, out, weren't it they? Was, it was like it was full on. It wasn't much downtime, that's for sure. You no, know? But that's kind of like your lifestyle, really. Like you're you're that dude, right? Uh -huh. Like you love that shit. Yeah, I mean, it's the grind. It's it's part of the sport, you know. Yeah. It's it's who's, you know. I mean, growing up, it was who's putting in the hard work, you know. Because if you're not doing it, someone else out there is. Yeah, you know? yeah. But no, having him, man, he's he's got the same mentality, which was great. I know he's in his preseason training, which was kind of good for me. Um, yeah, because it, it kept you really oh, like yeah, on it. Yeah, you know, a lot of guys kind of switched off after yeah. you know, the SX Open. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you know, he was in his preseason. He's like, you know, doing 50 laps today, let's do another 75 tomorrow. Like just just pounding out laps. And for yeah, me, yeah, I was like getting a bit excited. Yeah. I was like, we're gonna do 50 <laughs> laps this day. We're gonna do 75 this day, and then we're gonna do 100 laps at the end of the week. But I'm, now I'm thinking, oh, dude, like, I don't really have tires. Like, I got yeah. a little excited, so we just, like, stuck it. Like, yeah, because I saw one one of the days you did 80 laps, yeah. though. It was a lot. That's no joke. I yeah. mean, it, he did 75. But 76. He, I, I he rounded it up a little. I did. Yeah, yeah, right. You know what? <laughs> hey, I was trying to space it up a bit just so, like, you know, Reed and Britain seen that. Hey, this boy's doing 80. <laughs> <laughs> just let them know. Yeah. Get a young boy. Yeah. Hey, you know, Salty, I was just throwing a little yeah, bit of space on there. Of, a bit of heat. I was, was rounding it out to 80. Uh, do you, and I did put it on my YouTube as well. Fuck, now I'm done. <laughs> done for. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> did you guys hang out much in the States? Because you're both in Florida, right? Towards the end, yeah. So where did this, where did this bromance first started get Started in Claremont. We're the Claremont crew, yeah. right? Yeah, Claremont crew. Just uh, But where was the first time we locked eyes? Oz uh, X <laughs> Open last year. Oh, that's year. right. Oh, We're yeah. at the after party yeah. last year. So this year. is a bit of like, this it, is a bit of hey, international strange It was a qu right quick, now. quick little like, you know, hey, how you going, he bye. He was just like, came over at the after party and he was just like, oh, what's up? How's things? Being, talking to me and Sarah just being like super nice and then the security just grabs him he's literally like standing there doing nothing wrong and he's like you need to get over here and I'm like why? I was like later Hayden well, <laughs> hey it was rad yeah, no but yeah. I don't know he lives in Claremont and then um, I was obviously hurt all summer so I was just cycling and training and then and then I don't so even know how you first eventually came over I, I don't know I just told him to come over and then he's like dude we should have a barbecue so he comes over and he brings like obviously being a nice Aussie he brings like stuff to barbecue with and I didn't know you such a like master cook and then yeah I just pretty much sat and played Fortnite while he cooked <laughs> <laughs> yeah no it's he's it's, quite the chef though he's good he <laughs> made that guacamole just eating some chips and walking I'm playing my game and he's in the kitchen whipping it up I was like this is awesome yeah, this works for the, me the, yeah. the usual grill grill outs you know it's like I guess somebody brings something you know yeah, but yeah. for him it was just his house, his Xbox, and the yeah. grill, you know. I brought everything else. Oh, and then, he was the man. And oh, then, he made it happen. Hey, but I'll tell you what. When we went to Young, 
to his place this, you know, a couple of weeks ago. He was making me look really bad because he's got his <laughs> oh. girlfriend and he's just pampers hey. her. Yeah, pampers yeah, her. Yeah, 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 yeah. Breakfast yeah. in Brownie the morning, points, coffees, like, and I don't really do any of that. So I look <laughs> horrible. Like, and I'm just like, he's like cupcaking all the time. And oh, man. So now you got some work to do. When yeah, you get back. I was yeah. definitely not looking too Sarah, good in front Sarah of Sarah. Sarah knows what a what a real yeah, man's like. Yeah, Sarah just right seen what a real gentleman <laughs> looks like. Yeah, she, no. uh, I mean, she just gets mauled by bikes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> broken noses and all. Yeah. Oh. Really no, it's man. I, I love to cook, so it doesn't bother me, you know. But um, especially when I have guests over. Yeah, like he's a great Sarah, cook. Yeah. It's like such a process, though. Like cooking, cleaning, eating. It's like, <laughs> I just like, I just love Chipotle. Just go to Chipotle. It's quick. Dude, love that's it. like yeah. my, that's my, that's definitely one of the things I miss about oh, America. Oh, 100%. I just like, and we got that Guzman Gomez yeah, or whatever, but yep, it's like, it's, it's just not the same, mm. man. Like, Chipotle dude. is like a, a three to four time a week thing, minimal. Dude, a four a minimal, sure, you man. Know, minimal. It's, it's amazing. Nothing like it here. When the last place I lived in the States, like we were riding like uh, like Hollywood, West Hollywood. Mm -hmm. And dude, I just get on my bike and it was so quick to get to Chipotle. Mm -hmm. And that was just my go-to. No traffic. Just ride in there. Yeah, no, you got options, sure. you know. Get the burrito. Do you want the yeah. soft tacos? Even the you enchiladas. just can't beat it. Like It's like the go-to after riding every time. Mm. Dude. Except I don't... During like... I, I try like during the week like I don't try to eat any chipotle like I try Why to not? eat like because I just try to eat like Sarah like will make me a nice lunch and then just I like to just eat like home foods like eat at home during the week because we just eat out all the time while we're traveling you know what yeah, I mean yeah yeah that's true obviously eating out it's easy and convenient but if someone's going to cook for you <laughs> then uh, <laughs> yeah I just think it's, it's important for me to like eat breakfast lunch and dinner at home during the week yeah, no, that's fair enough. And it makes you appreciate it more too. Like yeah, going when out. you do eat out. Yeah. Do, are you going back to the States next year or are you staying here? What are you doing? Yeah, nothing set in stone just you yet. You don't know Unfortunately, yet, Unfortunately, I mean, man, the dream's always there. It's, it's never going to stop, but to do it on a private tier, it's, it's getting harder oh, and harder, eh? It's harder, especially with this, you know, arena cross series finishing. There's so many guys yeah. that, are, that are sitting back waiting for their opportunity. And, you know, I'm not saying I'm ruled out or anything, but there's so many Americans and... I just feel like America being so patriotic, it's they're gonna always lean to an American person before myself. So it's it's difficult, definitely at this this point in time. You know, um, you know he's doing the Cambodian nationals though. Oh yeah, Cambodia yeah. and Afghanistan nationals. Yeah, yeah. I got a big you Bring know, that world tour. Back, son. <laughs> I got a big world uh, world tour happen. I'm gonna be a Brighton. I'm gonna go from weekend to weekend. Yeah, dude, straight up, man. Like you can make some pretty good monies, like just monies, money doing the just the off season stuff. These yeah, days. Oh, right. sure. him. yeah, I was just joking about him, but. <laughs> That's what's actually kind of funny is like me running a red plate. Like I just signed up here to race two races and all of a sudden running a red plate. Like, this is sick. I'll do this more often because I haven't ran a red plate. And 2012 was the last time I had a red plate. Did so. you have a red plate on when Eli cleaned you out? Yeah. Thought, I thought so. See, that's a bit of my mm. motor knowledge, I was actually. Nah, I that was some remember. That was some bullshit. Yeah. Hmm. He ran, I know he ran red plate a lot on PC. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. was pretty free. And it frequent. looked good too. Yeah. And you used to run the red gloves with it as well. Yep. You'd so have like the green gear with the red gloves. Always the red gloves, yeah. Woo! Ha! Yeah. You haven't ran a red plate on a 450 yet, huh? So no. this is no, first. No, so it's yeah, next. debut. It's not, and it's still FIM. Yeah, yeah. But, eh. I'll You'll take it. I'll take it. You got it. You got to take it. Having a red plate in America, you're truly a badass, no matter what class. It's pretty Oh, crazy. dude, for sure. Yeah. It's crazy how heavy that thing can be to people too, eh? Mm -hmm. Like, you see people that get that red plate, and it's just like struggle street straight from that. Does it, is it like, does it weigh on you mentally being like a points leader? I feel like when I was younger, it did, because I, I uh, would just stress out too hard on it, or try too hard, or whatever. Like, so now that I'm growing up, a little bit, not much. I haven't grown up nah. much, but uh, <laughs> in, in I, 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 not, like now I don't think it would be that heavy on me. Like, yeah, I'm honestly like after all this shit I've been through, like I'm just happy to be at the races, get to do what I love. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I mean, I always say I'm a privateer, but I just like you're not gonna be a privateer. For I, yeah, I just honestly like I, it's like crazy as you grow up and you like go through these life phases and stuff like that. Like it's just like honestly, if you just like put in the work, do the right things, like you know what the right things are. Like if you do something that you shouldn't be doing, then inside tells you you don't. It's like you get this inside feeling you shouldn't. Like yeah. it's not the right thing. Just do the right things. Do like be a nice person. 
and good things happen. It's crazy though. Like I'm like such a karma person. Like mm, it's crazy. Yeah. It's it's gnarly though, man. Like because everyone, like I've done a podcast with Chad this week. Then I just did one with BT, and like everyone's talking about you as this story of like, okay, well something's wrong with the industry if you don't have a ride. And it's cool. Like I think that that's like a credit to you as a person, and I it, guess it so. speaks to exactly what you mm. just said. Because all these people are now rooting for you in like such a massive way, and I think that it's solely because you've been so good to everybody. I think the American industry, I've well, I've noticed it. It's all off one race, and I think it's it's so hard. Like, you know, Dino's been a great rider for years and years, but I mean, no no disrespect to Barsha or anything, but he come out and did like a couple, you know, two or three races, boom, all of a sudden he yeah. signs a two year deal. It's like, yeah. wow, you know, like. But Dino, I mean, he got had a great year still. He had got a couple of podiums and this and that, and all of a sudden, they mm-hmm. forget about what happened, you know, a couple of years yeah, prior. Exactly. So it's yeah, it, honestly, you just you just have to be healthy. That end of the story, you got to be healthy. Like I, I did my knees. This is like, you know, I've you know been hurt a lot, and you just got to be healthy. When I was healthy, and that when I like was that privateer, then I got on Husky, and then I just said I didn't even set the bar high. I said I want to be top tens, and I. Because I knew if I just like didn't put pressure on myself, say, hey, let's top 10 every weekend for 29 weekends. Let's top mm. 10. And what happens? Just my results got better. I got podiums, got re signed. You know, it, it all just like so many good things came from it just by saying, hey, like instead of like going flat out, you know, right at 85 to 90%. And finish the races and just salvage a top 10 and you're there the next weekend you know mm-hmm. and like just good things came from that so then when i was re-signed and then i you know for the next year and then that's where i go into from anaheim one it was different mentality it was like yeah. i want to like battle up front now and like i don't want to just race. run a top 10 and then yeah that didn't end well you see that so often though like with the the young kids in the 2 class this day and age they come in with, so hot. oh so hot like you know Look make it, making Austin, it to round one Adam, yeah, yeah Adam yeah they always crashing man like, Faulkner like there's so yeah. many kids that come in all guns blazing and yeah. it's like if they just wound it back like two percent five percent you know they would be there thereabouts every weekend yeah dude, you know? it's just that growing up thing though I think yeah. it's just the age like I was the same so dude speaking of all guns blazing did everybody see Jet Lawrence's pass yesterday oh, yeah, yeah. That god awesome. damn is that from Deegan yeah. that Deegan, Deegan posted yeah, that oh was, my god that was intense he yeah. showed a lot of speed there dude yeah, that's was, straight send that mode that was son. Cool. is he in sicko mode is that what Travis that Scott wrote mode? that song about yeah it could that was be. pretty close to sicko mode yeah I, I haven't got to see him I haven't got to see him rage yet, but from what everyone tells me, he's the real Jet's the real well, deal. I mean, he's, he's just like turned 15. He's no, he's still 14. He's 14 but mate, yeah, they made him race A class. What I've heard, that really was meant to race B, all signed up, and then uh, yeah, in, smoked him in practice. And the, and the AMA is like, no, he has to step up. Raced, you know, the EMX overseas. So no yeah, way. 14. 14 he's going to have to do a couple years in A class now, you know. And he, and he's holding his own over there, from what what I can see. Dude. Oh my. Yeah, that's that cool. I just as soon as you said young kids sending it, I just like, man, I watched that shit so many times mm. yesterday. I love when, I mean, obviously like I'm biased because he's an Aussie kid, yeah. and I think we need a couple more mm. Aussies like really, because dude, like for, for you, right? You're fast enough to be over in America. You're fast enough to be on a good team. I think mm-hmm. if you got a good opportunity, you'd be up there. Yeah. I think it was the same when Jats was there. 100%, like he was yeah. getting fourth in heat races. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like but the Lawrences right now have got. You know what? The infrastructure. Yes, yeah. the, the amateur program leading into their pro career, which is is what what we're all we're over there trying to get, you know, yeah. and what they've got right now, if they can just keep their head on and, and, you know, have fun with it at the end of the day, I mean, they're going to be some, you know, yeah. turning some heads in, in sure. professional well, ranks. I think, like, one of the bummers, right, is that I think that when you get guys like the Moss Brothers and then you get Reardon and you get these dudes that went over there and like Keisha, and mm-hmm. then the JDR dudes, Ty Simmons, like all it was like Medi, Reed, and Burner, and mm-hmm. there was like these staple Aussie dudes, mm-hmm. and then there was like a feeling of trust in the industry with Aussie riders mm-hmm. because they were like these guys are on the box, they're doing doing work. Mm-hmm. Medi won motos, Burner won uh, motos, podiums, all that stuff. But then that new era, like Reardon, the mm-hmm. Mosses, they went over there, and in my opinion, they kind of jacked things up for us a little bit mm-hmm. because. Then all it was like flash in the pan. They're yeah, not. Yeah. They're not. They're yeah. back. They're not. And then you guys went over, like you and Jats, like, and it just 
it never seemed like the industry wanted to get behind you guys mm-hmm. in the same way. It seemed, it almost seemed like they were burned a little bit yeah. by like that sort of second wave of Aussies. I think. And now I think that Hunter and Jet, yeah. if they can do well, they're going to like reestablish that like trust in the industry. Mm-hmm. It's in like to get a factory right it's so hard and you're only ever given one year and it's yeah. because like you've got this amateur program coming through so if you don't perform in one year and you're for instance you know like a McAdoo he got one year on Geico if you you know if you're the lowest place Geico rider you've got amateur guys that are going to push you out yeah. you know what I mean so you got to prove yourself so you've really only got one year and as Dino said about being healthy if and like some dude just hit you and blew out your knee yeah, like you're, you're not in control mm-hmm. of this sport like you're such a passenger in motocross. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of people. I mean, Canard getting landed on, on on a triple. Yeah. You know, it's there's a lot of, you know, not just yourself, It's you got to rely on other people not to do stupid shit yeah, as well. Yeah, and it's like, <laughs> dude, the, the racing just never gets easier, you know? Nah. It never gets easier. If you're a 250 guy and you're like the top 250 guy, there's always people coming up trying to beat you and there's young kids coming up, you know? And then if you're like a 450 guy like myself and... You, you just have the 250 guys moving to the 450 class and the 450 class just gets heavier oh, yeah. and heavier. You have guys like Brayton and Chad who yeah. are like legends that have been in the sport for, or in the 450 class for years and then you have the, the 250 guys coming up and then you have guys that have been in the class for a few years now like myself mm. the class is insane right? oh, yeah. you're getting forced up from 250s too like yeah, you know, yeah I mean, with the points and, stuff. and so many like, people get it forced just, up it never gets easier but did I wonder what I, I wanted to ask you what what's it like to know that you hosed Eli and Ando at some point in your career yeah it's kind of weird but because like I, now I like Obviously, they've won titles yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, you've won your lights title, yeah. obviously. But it's yeah. like, does that does that like play on your mind in like a negative way, or in a or you just it gives you confidence to be like, well, I know I've beat them before. Well, yeah, I used to beat those guys all the time, same as Barsha. But um, I mean, I still feel like uh, uh, you know, I feel like I'm not far off of them. But the best thing that I can do, like, y- you can look in the past and say that, but that's just honestly going to put you know make you depressed and down like I honestly don't even look in the past anymore like I think they're great writers and they deserve everything they've got and uh, for me I just want to look in the present and just try and better myself every day in my racing and whatever like because those guys just haven't went through what I've been through like yeah. dude I I just I feel like there's not a lot of people that could have kept going like there's been some mental oh, times dude. that has been gnarly but that's why I just have it's all about having a different perspective and I feel like my perspective now it's about, um, dude, I just want to be happy and I, and I want to ride my bike for a living and I just do what I love. And that's what's important to me now. Like, you know, um, sometimes like, yeah, those guys are, are winning and, but, um, but you've got to have confidence in like your they, talent they can level be measurable to too, though. You know, you can see a lot of people that they're the champion or whatever they are. And, you know, they just don't really enjoy life. Like I want to be happy, but I also want to set a good example to the upcoming kids like you know to never give up and and just be a good person all around um so yeah just with my injuries and stuff like you can't you can just you can't look in the past you got to always look ahead but you've got to know that like your talent is there to like be able to beat those dudes right no it is it is my talent is there and you know even like i i feel like i'm not far off of jason but i just feel like my consistency like jason's consistency is really good um, and it's got to even just if be you like watch mentality like mentality stuff. Yeah, too, it man. really is. It's a lot of mental, and he's got a lot of confidence, and they're just yeah. all good writers. So but many, it's a big mental game for there's sure. There's so many factors that go into it, not just like crazy, you're talking eh? mental, like you're talking like the start. It comes down to start techniques, like the, the infrastructure of like teams. Like Tomac's been on Kawasaki now for years and years, and he's going into Anaheim One probably with, if not better than what he had at Anaheim One last year. You know what I mean? Where Dino coming in on as a privateer so he's trying to build his own program again yeah. you know? so there's a whole so many factors that come into it like there's tents that that separate the top top guys yeah. you know but yeah it's crazy it's we're all so close there's so many good writers but uh for me i think i'll be fine but the, th- the thing that's crazy for me like the whole privateer deal is like it's so hectic and there's so much to get done like sometimes i'll like I'll try to squeeze in my training, but sometimes I'll mess with training just because yeah. I have to get shit done. I'm just like, oh my God. Man. Ben, ben said like an interesting thing yesterday though. Like hey, there was something that happened where like 
uh, Alden was off with Nicky Hayden. So, like, he was on that full Alden grind program, right? And then he went to Freestone and was, he said, I was just exhausted. And then he said, Alden went to, like, some race in Europe with Nicky Hayden. And then, so he just said that he couch surfed for a week, went out, went one one the next weekend. Mm. Yeah. Well, so, I mean, there's, there's got to be, like, a balance. Like, I feel like sometimes you guys get forced into thinking that you have to be grinding mm-hmm. every single day. Yeah. But it's like, at some point too, like there's got to be a balance for rest. And if yeah. you're doing all of that other stuff, like where is that time for rest? I don't know. I'm speaking just on myself, but maybe Dean's the same. Some of my best racing have actually come when I'm sick. Because going into the race, like the night before I'm sick, you know, I've got a cold. And that day I'm, the pressure, I take the pressure off myself thinking, yeah. oh, I'm sick. Like, I'm not expecting to do well and I'll go out and I'll kill it. You know what I mean? And maybe that's, I mean, maybe maybe that's just me, but you know, sometimes it's like, it's not all about, you know, how much you train and all that, you know, mental and health, everything comes into it. Well, I've had that like even lately, like with the fight stuff that I've been doing, like there's a, there's like a weight division where you fight in and like you expect to win that. And then there's an open class division where like dudes like 120 kilos and you're like, well, I don't think I can win. And then you win. (laughs) And then you're like, but you're not nervous for that yeah. one at all you because take, you don't expect I'm it. like, oh, I'm probably going to lose. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then yeah. you end up winning and it's like, well, shit, why can't I just like have that same mm-hmm. mentality? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Uh, my take on it, like I think Alden's approach and Tyler's and like I, I enjoyed it. But I mean, there's some parts that were like really tough. But I but think you've make, that you're always program have to make sacrifices. is like it's mental toughness. It's, yeah, it's, it, I feel like I. That, that program built up my mental toughness for sure. Yeah. Because there's times where you just want to quit, and it's about not quitting. Yeah. Because you're gonna get that, and you're gonna get to that stage in your motos, like Southwick, 27 minutes in, Ooh. you got someone on your ass, yeah. like you want to quit, yeah. like you should oh, want to yeah. quit. Yeah. No, there's been motos like where I've been leading, and I like I could have easily just pulled off. Like I'm dying, like I'm dying. Really? I'm so yeah, hot. Yeah, yeah. Like eat, like back in 2011 when I was winning, like. I, it was like Melville and it was so hot and Tyler was like riding really good that mode. I got heat stroke and after the mo like I just got water balls and just poured them over me. I was dying. I started shivering and it was like really hot. I'm shivering and I was dying. Like I was in the lead, I won the race and um, yeah, it was rough. So it's just a mental game for sure. You gotta be mentally tough. And yeah, just so you, have, you gotta yeah. be able to suffer. So like and that's where I think Zach Osborne and yeah. anyone anyone <laughs> anyone at the top can suffer plain and simple mm. like Jason it's funny like he's just such a character because he he always tries to play off a little bit like he uh, does man he does I'll tell you what he can suffer mm. I've seen it mm. and he, yeah. he puts in the he puts in the work too like uh, it's just funny like people always try to like have these little takes on him and like obviously I know him don't let him feel you that dude works out every day tra- like trains hard rides hard it's just funny, but yeah, he, uh, he can suffer. Dude, and, yeah, and he comes across like basically a freestyle rider. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, or like a Berriman sort mm-hmm. of dude, but like, yeah. Oh, you can't win a world Supercross style in 450 class by no. like being lazy. No. no. Or just, yeah, you just... He I, showed he had everything to win the championship, even at, uh, I think, a Salt Lake with the flat tire situation, maybe. I think... Yeah, when like, you have to pull in. Like and that, that right there, like most people would be gone yeah you know, but he he held his composure like, that was funny that race i you okay, were yeah you were like i i <laughs> so he crashed first turn knocked all his spokes out okay i'm like third lap i got cleaned out hey, Mick. and uh i got cleaned out and my uh uh oh i popped my thumb out and anyways my, my bike was all all messed up so I pulled into the uh, I pulled into the mechanics area and Jason was already in there because I needed to get my bike straightened out, and uh, dude, it was so dramatic and they're like freaking <laughs> out. So I was like, he's like screaming. I'm like, all right, fuck, you know, like you guys just get get what needs to be done. I mean. I, mean, I'm not I thought the, you were pulling in there to like <laughs> give him your bike. Oh, you're as bad as everybody else. So, so then like I commented on Jason's thing, like, man, I pulled in just to like to give you my bike, so or whatever. Like the fans just ate that up, like it was real life, like because it's always funny like to troll some of the fans, like, and they were like, you on that Takashi shit right now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they were just like, how, like. Come on. You can't do it. I mean, you, you can't. He can't go I'm, out there and write a number fifteen bike. Like yeah. I went in there for my own problems. <laughs> yes, yeah. it was just a funny story. But dude, like, I mean, fuck, like in the heat of the moment, 
you'd be just like, and he's your friend, yeah. and like you're not in the championship. I would have like if I, I if, if he needed it, you're I would have. That would do that. Yeah, because I mean, only because I'm not in contention. Yeah, that's what I'm <laughs> but, saying. Um, yeah, it was it was it was, uh, it was just funny. I I was going in with my own problems, and I see he's in there, and then he's like. Just stressing out, ah, screaming, and then like you know he gets going and just dumps his clutch. Ah, he's out of there. And then oh man, what did you have wrong with your bike? I got cleaned out. My bike was all twisty, and I popped my thumb out as well. And then uh. it, it went back in. So I was like kind of hurting, and then I was so far back, and then so we straightened out, and like I caught back to like 13th or something. But yeah. Salt Lake was bad. Then yeah. whoops, track was sketchy. Yeah, whoops, that really? was a horrible. Dry. Reason. It was dry, mm. and the whoops were so edgy. Mm. Oh boy. Do you reckon they should like train, change the tracks, like do different stuff with the tracks? Because I feel like we just watch the same track every weekend almost. What was the uh, What was the Florida track where Hill Jack- Jacksonville? Uh, no, 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 no. no uh, Tampa. 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 Yeah. That was the best track of the year. I don't know why. Like for me, like as a fan watching that one, why I felt you like that beach sand? Oh, I hated that sand. Yeah, yeah but the see, that's the thing. All right, right, so that's the thing. You guys probably think it sucks, but for us at home, it's like that's what we want to see. Like I, I feel yeah. like you guys want like you guys want the path of least resistance to yeah. where you can just go out. It's not going to give you bike setup problems. It's not going to cause any sort of dramas yeah. for you guys. But for the fans at home, like we like we want to see that yeah. because. Man, by like round nine of the series, everything looks the same. There's like one dude's got a 15 get points lead, then it's only like a two horse race, mm. maybe three guys. So it's like, I don't know. I feel like there would be resistance from like teams, especially because then there's like the bike setup stuff that yeah. you have to go through. But like, man, I really wish that there was like some different stuff that went down I with mean, the tracks. Because like that, why is Daytona the most exciting race every year? Yeah. I, it's the I, most they crazy just need to design. I mean, design new jumps, I guess you could say. Yeah. Instead of just doing a triple, double, I mean, get a bit more dirt, maybe make it, you know, instead of a dragon's back, maybe a big staircase to the hill, um, to the sky. I mean, that just, would be cool. I mean, you got, I mean, you got to a think, like, work, it is, like, you see freestyle, like, it's all evolving with different stuff. Like, it's super across the tracks. So there's the only same, so much yeah. you can do, you know. It's, it's, it is hard. you got the over and unders, like, you know, I mean what else can you really do what other jumps can you add you know like but you're you right well, like, like there was a staircase that went up the hill you know like that, what I mean into yeah, the yeah like, da, 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 you're like the Coliseum yeah, back like in that, the day yeah, yeah. but like jumps dude like, I, don't I don't know if know. you guys have seen this have you seen I don't Hayden's not very like you know when we talk about Mo IQ, I don't feel like Hayden's no, got a good no, Mo IQ. No. Like he barely <laughs> knows who Jeremy McGrath is I don't even I stay away from the motorcycle like you know, the, the 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 websites. Hey, I'm you're not too, no, I'm just talking about. He's too busy pampering his chick to exactly. watch races, He's too busy, bro. Like, <laughs> hey, she just called me. Today. We can Facetime if you want. <laughs> <laughs> so we um, uh, where was it going with this? Oh, so there's like this race. It was back in the '90s. I want to say. I don't know if you've seen it. And dude, it's all wooden ramps, and it's on like pavement, and they like launch these mm. wooden ramps, and like uh, oh, guys yeah, like make yeah, yeah. and they had these wa- these wooden. And they just like rail and they'd them. Send them. Yeah. They'd send yeah, those yeah. like wooden like single things yeah, as well. Like. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I feel like there's definitely like there has to be see. room. I like the split sections from back in the day on Supercross. They don't do split split lanes very much anymore. No, yeah. They don't. It's oh, no. always like it always ends up being like super one line though, eh? And Joker lanes, things like that. Maybe instead of just Monster Cup incorporating it into most Supercrosses, like, like, that'd be cool. I think too, man. Like I wish there was more of the Triple Crown style deals mm. because like. Because I feel like it's so dependent on, like, who can grind. Well, this year, yeah, because it's 20, 20 minutes, not 20 laps. You know, these boys are doing yeah. 27 laps. Like, I mean, they lap up to six, seven positions some races. Yeah, that's insane yeah, to me, I right? Could, yeah, I could imagine as spectators, it gets quite boring and, you know, but... And the thing is, man, like, if say if there was only two teams in the NRL and one of them yeah, won... Man, huh? You can't find it. Yeah. If, could you imagine if there was like two NFL or NRL teams? How many people would watch that for yeah, 16 yeah, weeks? Yeah. But that's what Supercross ends up being, man. It ends up being two teams. Between two guys. It ends up being... NASCAR, ha- you it's know, It's the after, same, yeah. But, but see, NASCAR have the thing where it's the like... The points reset. They reset, yeah. you know. I think with the 17-round Supercross series, the points need to reset for top 10, possibly, you know. Maybe at, you know, round 10, seven yeah. rounds to go, let's reset the points, let's, you know, and top 10, go for it, you know. I think maybe that would be something to look into, but keep I it d- entertaining. Yeah, no, I just think that the the problem is is that the uh, the teams would be scared of it because you'd get, like, Roger DaCosta, who all, Can't like, yeah, he just wants to win the, the championship every year, so it's like that's really all mm. those guys care about. So mm. it's like 
I don't know. It's a right. it's a hard one. I gotta roll boys. Gotta roll. Yeah. Time, gotta roll. Food. time to get yeah, I gotta eat lunch and then track walk. What yeah. time is it right now? Three thirty. Three thirty. How long have we been going for? See you guys. How long have we been going for, Mick? An hour thirty. Hour and a half. I don't know. Is there anyone? I know, this catch has seen some shit. Yeah. Uh, is there anyone else over there that we can grab? Oh, is, yeah, do you want to see if someone's over there? And then uh, I'll do my best. Thanks for coming on, dude. Uh, just like Jats and Sam and Dean. So, yeah, just whoever. All right, guys, if you're still watching, uh, we're going to be back in a couple minutes. We're just going to get a little bit more talent. Alright, so we got track walk, so we're gonna try to rustle up some people, so stick around if possible. Uh, if not, we'll be back in a minute. Jay, you're there, mate. Oh. Bring the, just keep the mics as close to your face as you can. DJ M1 in the house. Yep. And then I've got to sort this shit out. Yeah, I know. It's a bit of a Rubik's <laughs> Cube, that thing. You're going to you're gonna struggle for a minute. Yeah, look. Ah. I'm not telling you. It's a secret. That's like the quality. Hey, oh, that was like record yeah. time. Bring that as close as you can to your to your face. Just These like, things just in my face. In, What's yeah. going on here? Yeah, just swivel it in. DJ M1 struggling to figure it out. I thought you were a DJ. Me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like that. Uh -huh. Yeah, secret. There we go. Are we Flip. live now or what? Yeah, we're live, man. Oh. Bring, wait, pull, just like, nah, just like, sw it just swivels, just pull it towards you. No, like, turn it. Yeah, like, like, this, like this. this. Oh. Hey. Yeah, we got my, what, my lovely manager slash assistant slash life coach, Sam Moore. <laughs> All right, so we got the, uh, the the champ, Jay Wilson, and the former champ, 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 okay. champ, Jay Marmot. Champ one, two. So uh, what's happening, boys? Uh, we're just here uh, in Auckland. Um, 
she's wet at the moment, but uh, yeah, we're just trying to waste as much time really as we can because um, yeah, they're trying to dry this track out. But how excited are you that it's a mudder? Because <laughs> the talk of the town, every single person that's come on here has just gone, yeah, Jay Wilson's gonna send it. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I don't enjoy the mud at all, but uh, if there's a mud race, I'm in for it. So uh, I've done all right with them, but who knows? It looks tri- pretty dry under the top, so we'll just uh, see how it is in practice here soon. How long till practice, is it? Uh, they've pushed it back to 4, 4.40, I believe now. So, yeah, 4.40 they've pushed it back to. So the boys are, I guess, going to see what it's like. Um, I think they're, they're a little concerned about the finish line, so <laughs> I oh, guess that'll yeah. be the... That'll be the decider whether they're going to pull it out or leave it in. So hopefully they can leave it in. Yeah, yeah you've got, right. you got some uh, SX2 guys, uh, all New Zealand, New Zealand boys that uh, actually haven't rode Supercross before, let alone hit a ramp. Oh, and yeah. The wet, Dude, so. one of the boys actually <laughs> was talking to me and uh, and he, he's like, oh, you reckon I'll be right hitting that, that <laughs> finish line job? And I was like, I think they're pretty easy, like from what I've been told so I don't think it's like going to be a struggle it's easy but you got to still but commit. you got to know yeah, yeah you got to know yeah, what and to and this weekend looks like they've got a pretty high down ramp so if yeah, you that knuckle that thing that's a big drop to the ground oh <laughs> dude yeah who was it Dinsdale did the old didn't know he didn't knuckle it he like no. did the whip right and whip then cra- and just yeah, didn't yeah, yeah, back, yeah. Back, back, yeah. Jason, Jason nearly went off last weekend dude yeah. that was gnarly yeah. yeah that was actually uh, free practice I did the same in swinged off the side of it and yeah. only just got the edge of the ramp you know or like the down ramp so it's it's pretty gnarly I said to these boys uh, the promoters and stuff they need to chuck another um, ply- layer of plywood on the side it's uh, starting mm. to get narrower and narrower so uh, yeah see what happens in a few years to come so the big dog's in the old management role these days. How does it feel to um, become a corporate sellout? Oh, it's been good. <laughs> <laughs> it's been good. I'd, like, I liked it the first year, but the second year's been more fun, I guess. Um, probably taking the, the helmet off yourself and just learning to get the most out of the boys and, and have fun going racing. So um, The results are usually a bonus, but trying to keep them you know, motivated and get the eye on the win usually. So yeah. Dude, old Cloudy surprised the hell out of me this year. Like, and not in like you didn't think he was capable of doing it, but in such like a good way. Like he just, because I feel like, and you might be able to speak on this a little bit. Like, was is there ever a thing that comes in a rider's mind when you've got like real big dog Americans coming over and you think like, ah, oh, I'm probably not going to win. But it seems like Cloudy just went full send mode and like that um, that first heat race at Jimboomba with uh, with JB. He really like put the hammer down and said like, I'm here and I'm going to have a right crack. Yeah, he is, and you know he's he's done awesome even in uh, motocross this year. But uh, you know he's just I guess Cloudy's got to just learn to you know just calm himself. I guess his heat races he's good. He's got awesome speed. But uh, when it comes to the final, like racing one on one with someone like Justin Brayton, sometimes you need to you know sit back and wait for your opportunity to pounce and trying to get him to be a bit more patient. So unfortunately he had a few crashes and he hasn't been able to do as much practicing lately. So that's kind of, you know, put him back a little bit from where he wants to be or where he needs to be. But hey, the mud's the great equalizer and uh, it's going to bring all these guys, you know, really close together and you're going to have to be somewhat precise out there tonight, not rush and put yourself in good position. Yeah, dude, speaking of crashes, man, your crash at uh, Oz X was heavy, dude. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely still feeling did that. You, did you, like, tr- try to lose the championship? <laughs> that <laughs> night was stressful. Were you I reckon, going in uh, and being like, you know what, I don't know if I want to be a champ. Oh, mm. man, that that crash on Friday night really it was, rocked me. That was bad, bro. Yeah, I like, a, I, some people saw it and uh, yeah, I was most sitting, people I was heard sitting it. Right, <laughs> I was sitting right there. Like, yeah. I was where the, down, uh, the takeoff was. I was directly in front of it, man, and I, and I was watching you do your lap. <laughs> yeah, because, like, that was first lap. Like, I was on a heater and, uh, yeah. Because you went out first, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, I think that must, must be why I was watching you, yeah. Go out and try to put some laps down straight away. Um, try to get out of the carnage, pull it up, and then put some laps in it then. But, um, yeah, just lost the rear end coming out of that turn, clipped the end of the berm, and threw me into those metal ramps, and, man, those that things do sucked. not move. No. So, yeah. What's it, like... To me, on the outside looking in, it seems like you have a kid that you maybe weren't planning on, like, kind of having a family, like, right at that time. Maybe you wanted to get some other stuff in line, but you got thrown into the deep end, and it's almost bought, like, the best version of you out, right? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I deal with every situation that's thrown, in, uh, thrown at me, and um, I do not 
Like, um, it's the best thing that's happened to me by far. And yeah, and it that, looks like that, man. Yeah, I think everybody that has kids, they'll probably uh, all back that up. You know, it's the best thing in the world. It's uh, It beats anything that, any feeling that I've ever had is having a kid and seeing them smile and them run into you of a morning and say, yeah. Dad, you know, like that. It's amazing. So for me, it's... I'm just really grateful to be able to uh, like have the team that I've got around me. They make it so like family orientated. I take my family to the race most of the time, and we just hang out in the truck. Um, my mechanic Wardy plays with my little daughter. He's just had a daughter as well, so he gets it. And uh, my uh, my team manager Bish, he also understands. He's got some kids, so um, it's just really cool. Um, I go to the races. I get to enjoy being there with my family. Now winning titles with my family there. Yeah. My little girl watching me, um, her growing up watching me race is just like Jay. He would understand that, you know. Yeah. Did having you, kids. Did racing, you feel that so. as yeah, well? I like did. when you uh, had kids, it's like that extra accountability. Like you're not, mm. you're not just doing it for yourself. No. Yeah. It was. I found it easy with one. Uh, once I got two, I found it a little bit harder just because they need your attention. So yeah. Having that one was easy, and you know I knew it wasn't putting too much pressure on my wife, uh, Abby. But so. Having that too was it made it a little bit tougher, but what was pretty cool was when I did come back racing a couple of years ago. Um, Jax is six, I believe, back then, or well, actually fives, and and he understood, you know, what yeah, racing was. And, yeah. You know, Chad Reed was his fan, and you know, Cooper Webb and all these guys. And then when I went out and beat him, he was just like blown away. So all of, all of a sudden, I become his fan. So it was yeah, it was pretty cool. It was a cool. That's moment crazy. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and like, because I mean, obviously your daughter's not old enough to sort of know what's going on, but like, man, those, even just the images of like, you know, your boys on your bike and the podium and then you guys as well and like the photo, like that shit lives on forever, man. Like, and you can't like, you can't stage that and be okay with it. Like, that's a moment that you have to earn and that has to be like a real moment and yeah. now that li literally lives forever. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I mean, like, I'm just so grateful to be able to be in the position that I am racing a motorbike, doing something that I love and with her growing up uh, in the sport you know that's something special and i want to keep doing this for as long as i can enjoying it and uh while she's growing up with me uh racing it's just something special you know she sees that i'm doing something that i enjoy and i want her to chase those same dreams you know if that's what she wants to do with anything you know if it's sport or it's just uh, any job you know chase your dreams and just enjoy it while you're at, while you've got it you know yeah, and obviously, like, because you were at the point where you pretty much were going to quit, right? Yeah, I was, mm. I was at a point where I was done, and that's... I come back from Europe, and I was over it, you know, but I got lucky. I'm very, very lucky. It's my first wedding anniversary today. Um, I'm not with my wife, so sorry about that, but, um, <laughs> yeah, I'll make it up to you next week. So, uh, But, yeah, I've got an amazing wife, and um, she just kept pushing me you know she knew that without motocross this is all I've known I've done this since I was race since I was four years old so she pushed me kept pushing me into doing it I was there was days where I was just like I'm done like, I'm, I was completely done like I'd walk into the truck after race and I was just like that's not me like yeah it wasn't me at all and through the motocross and then I just keep chipping away and I made um like motocross and supercross my second priority I, I got a job and I was roofing and stuff so um for me I'd turn up on the weekends and just be like it doesn't matter if I'm fifth, tenth, or first. You know, this—it's uh, not my income, and I think that probably put a little bit of stress on it too. That yeah. I was in a position where I wanted to, um, like, provide for my family, and I wasn't doing that. Yeah. Um, and I had a tough, a tough couple of years, and I was just thinking, when's this gonna like turn around? You know, and um, we just kept at it, and like I said, make it made it my second um, priority, and uh, we are able to turn it around. I uh, got some good people behind me that just kept believing in me so it's it's cool we're back uh, where we need to be and i'm just back enjoying it like i said with my family and my team and stuff like that it's just yeah. really cool did you ever have those like real low times in like your career mm. like maybe when you had like that big crash in the u.s or yeah i did i went to america after winning two championships here and i had a you know really good chance at going well over there and got fifth the first year in um in the supercross championship and then i injured myself and then yeah broke my leg really bad and went over there the next year like way underprepared you know with rods in my leg and whatnot and i really do with that group of guys i was with um, like josh grant and hans and all them guys they all seemed to go on and you know done pretty yeah, good yeah and you and were I, on that level i was just i was right there with them the whole time like battling for podiums and it would have been cool to see how far i could have went over there but in saying that i come back here and uh, got with a good team also with dacker and was pretty successful over here for a number of years so um was six championships in in five years it was so 
I can't, you know, I can't take that time back either. That was some good memories. But um, it's probably one part of my career I did regret, and I was a bit low at the time. But coming back and winning, you sure you forget about it pretty quick. So yeah, yeah. and and how has it been then transferring over into like doing the management stuff? Like, is it is it like different? with your experience as a racer if you didn't race do you think yeah i do believe like it comes a lot easier to me for me being a manager um i guess i can help the riders out any quick decisions they need to make and i kind of know what they're going through i know the feeling when they wake up on race day how you know it feels different every other day of the week and and just being there for just moral support really um just having good people in your corner and just trying to help them out whenever you can and and making decisions where they probably wouldn't think about, like just you know little things with the bike or whatnot that you know they're so focused on what they need to do uh, on the racetrack, they sometimes forget about the little things. So just taking that pressure off, and they can be like, oh, Jay's got it, and you know he'll take care of it. So and then they yeah, overlook all that. So good. Dude, uh, the last time we hung out before Sydney was Day in the Dirt. Oh yeah. Dude, did, you didn't go, did you? No. Dude. You need to go to that lot next year, dude. How fun was that event? I've heard some pretty crazy stories about that place. It was so Leesky yeah. was the one that was leading the charge. Yeah. Is he serious? <laughs> that was the best. That was the best ever. It's good if your boss, if you can't outdo your boss, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, dude. He was he was sending it, eh? Dude, how cool was like that whole event though? But I was, I specifically remember you riding like the full factory bike and just be like, hmm. I'm out, I'm out, no. I'm out. Yeah, when your smallest race is 30 minutes and you don't ride much and you've been drinking the night before, it's kind of hard to turn it around. <laughs> Dude. I heard it was pretty wild, like some guys on CR500s wheeling oh, yeah. down through the pits at night. Yeah, and Leesky was one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, so that that track got so rough mm. too, man, because it was like a full mudder and yeah. then it went super hard. So mm. when you get like that crazy it baked ruts, yeah. man, and like, because I, I, I rode, I got like, pretty hammered the Friday night and then I was going to do like the media race I did do the media race on Saturday and I uh, I stayed in my van until like no a Sunday sorry I stayed in my van till 3.30 in the afternoon on Saturday I was that hungover the biggest thing was just the laps man like it was like was 10 massive. minutes a lap so once you committed on that lap you're like oh, here we go again like, dude I did 3 laps and it was a 30 minute motor right, like yeah. it was BS well, was four. <laughs> <laughs> nah not uh, yeah I, I definitely need to be in like in better shape for it next year. Mm-hmm. You should definitely do it next year, but yeah. I don't know if it's going to be a QMP or not. But no, I'm, yeah, I've heard a few rumours. I'm not sure if it's going to be as wild either. I'll so probably have to tame <laughs> oh, it down yeah, a little bit. I'm so. glad. I heard some stories and they were like, yeah, they were very were happy. Like, but that, did you listen to our podcast after it? No, Dude, I haven't. Man, we, we, went, we went probably too deep on stories. <laughs> the, best, the best thing was you had no phone reception. I think that saved Dude, everybody. Dude, right? <laughs> I think everyone just got like a green light yeah, there to 100%. be like, we can do whatever yeah, we on want. Social media, yeah. So. Yeah. It, it actually it had like an old school vibe to yeah. it too didn't it like probably because like no one was on their phones man I left my phone in my yeah. van the whole time but I even think this event here brings like you know a bit of an old school crew dude, back together dude we were saying here, so. that like yeah. how rad is it that everyone's in the pits together yeah it is good that's so sick yeah, to me man and, uh, this is like it's similar to the UK arena cross that I did um, yeah. a couple of years ago you know like you go out in UK arena cross if you see those stadiums they're like smaller than Ozx mm. Open and they're just a takeout fest like mm. Subras and those guys they get into it man it's just like full T-bone central <laughs> and uh, you're back in the pits pitted right next to that guy so you got to speak no. to him and uh, it's just cool it's like cool vibe you know like it's all the French guys over in the UK that go over and do that series but they're just like it's like carnies man they go and put a show on and if the promoter is trying to undercut someone the riders all pull in and they say we're not we're not turning up and racing you know so really? all the riders really stick together over there and it's, it's quite cool they travel all over europe doing those races and that's sort of the same vibe that we've got here this weekend you know we're we're all in that that small tent we're all chatting um you know like we've got wilson chad and all those guys in here and we're just all hanging out having a good time chatting about racing and things that have happened in our career do you think we should do more of that stuff because like there is there is a obviously like the trucks make things easier with the parts and then you've got the bikes and you've got everything there but it's like do you lose a little bit of like the camaraderie when you go because it, man it's so segregated right like your dudes don't talk to their dudes don't talk to their dudes so every it's it yeah. feels very insulated well, and like I, I was gonna say like uh, scott bishop he always tells us stories he's my team manager and he always tells us stories about when they were traveling around racing supercrosses yeah and they'll be in high expense and i don't know jay might yeah. have experienced this a little bit 
I definitely, like, as a kid, when I got my license, I was driving down, riding tracks in Newcastle and going out to the tour, riding with Jacob Wright and, like, all my mates down in Sydney and stuff. But those guys were actually, like, three deep in the front of a high ace van, loaded up, bikes, air parts, everything, travelling from race to race. And if those guys didn't make the main event, the guy that was making the main event that weekend, he pays for fuel that pays week. For the fuel, yeah. And then they're just all chipping in for accommodation and stuff in it. It, we just don't have that vibe anymore and I understand it's professional this is our job and stuff like that and things are different these days but this sort of vibe here and that's that's what we've got you know we're all in the pits together we're having a chat and it's it's cool um, I think we should maybe try get some of that back somehow I don't know how that is but um, sometimes I think it's we, we've got to enjoy our job yeah and uh, yeah sometimes and it gets then, a little like, bit serious yeah and, and like it sort of feels like there's a bit of a low pressure atmosphere yeah, yeah. in there mm-hmm. and I mean obviously like the rain definitely adds to that a little bit as well but like even the way that um, like dude for the last two nights everyone's been hanging out together yeah, exactly. because it's like we're just this crew that's here and, and the AME boys have done such a good job like last night we were up at that sky bar and it's like everyone's together the whole time and like and I mean, obviously, I did like five seasons in the US, and it's like you'll be at the hotel bar, and it's like that's that team's there, that t- and like yeah, maybe the mechanics will talk and stuff, but it's like we're not all just put in a room, and we're not all like yep, everyone's at dinner, and man, dude, I've had like between Sydney X Games, then Oz X Open, and then now this event, man. I've been out of this sport in Australia in like a while because of the US and I'm like I'm having so much fun again because I get to hang out with all you guys and like dude I go I've known you since you were 13 I go back years with you like you know it's really cool like we do we do lose some of that when you just like oh there's the media tent oh there's a CDR there's the KTM truck but like man these last couple of weeks have just like reignited like and man we weren't even planning on coming here to do this podcast <laughs> and then Sydney was so fun we were just like fuck it we're coming back yeah I'm surprised to see you guys here it's pretty cool yeah just traveling around and shit talking really <laughs> yeah basically <laughs> but I mean yeah I, I, it's cool to hear you say that you like this vibe as well you know yeah I, I think all the riders would have the same opinion you know it's 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 like it's work and we all understand that but we're still we're still people and we still enjoy to have time uh, like fun time so and i think that's like these guys are the people that we've grown up racing with you know exactly we don't yeah. we're a lot of our schoolmates and stuff like we got close schoolmates and stuff but every weekend we're away we were with these guys yeah and i mean there's people that have dropped away and stuff but most of these guys like cloudy and myself man yeah we're, when we we're 13 14 stuff we were racing each other and mm. we see each other at the track on the weekend and that's the same through every generation you know you see kids growing up and these are the guys that we hang out with and we talk through the week yeah. um, just in the pits here but separating in our trucks and when we're at races we are there to do a job so it is hard but when we're here a couple of days early I think it makes it cool we are able to actually hang out and talk and especially being the end of the season That's for us it. right now I think as well um, everyone's pretty relaxed and we're coming here and it's a fun event for us you know it's been a long time since we've been over here yeah. it's a New Zealand Supercross and it's a mega track from what we've seen so far and AME boys have done a good job and everyone else that's put their effort in to make this event happen We're meant to have a really good crowd here 24,000 or something it's crazy which is, man it's man, so sick when did you ever hear those sort of numbers in I Australia know, dude. like it's been a while I so. doubt there would be a Warriors game this year that had 24,000 no, no I don't yeah. think so <laughs> no I seriously yeah. doubt that that would have been would have been a thing 100% they've never had a pre-sale I think this is the highest pre-sale that they've ever had so quickly it's so, insane, yeah. man. The boys have done so well. Well, hey, I think uh, everyone's going to do some track walk. I think we're all, yeah, I think we all have to do stuff now. Thanks for coming on, boys. I'm, yeah, cheers uh, for having us, I'm, man. I'm, I'm stoked. We'll, um, yeah, love to get both of you on, like, for a proper one at some point. Yeah, yeah that'd be great, dude. Thanks for having us. Done. Righto. I think we're going to wrap it up. Thanks again to uh, the boys at Nobby. Uh, don't forget that you can uh, subscribe to join the Undy Club. Uh, nobbyunderwear.com.au 20 bucks a month you get a fresh pair you boys should get on the programs it is good shit I've said it before you just don't even have to wash the bloody things <laughs> chuck them out <laughs> no they're like they've got like this crazy material dude it's all like antibacterial yeah, shit outfit. yeah I know it's, that's December normally they don't show you but, uh, but yeah so thank you to those guys thank you to the guys at Rival Inc and thank you to the guys at Boost Mobile uh, if you're not on Boost uh, and you're in Australia you, you're blowing it um, they have more data than you know what to do with so you can stream stuff like this silly podcast uh, so yeah thanks to everyone that made this happen uh, 
we're knocking off. I'm going to drink some beers. You guys are going to do your job. Uh, and then I say we meet up later. Drink beer. Maybe drink more beers. <laughs> End of <laughs> season. <laughs> Go have a beer. Yeah, wait, you can now. You're, you're <laughs> yeah. off the clock. All right. Thank you very much, everyone. Thanks, boys. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Sweet. Cheers. Thanks, boys.